All right, that should be working. Hold up. There we go. Now we're working. Now we're covering it. So oh, good evening, more morning, or afternoon. Time zones are a wonderful thing, everyone. Good. Good to have you all here. I'm this game. But well, welcome. Next. Yes. Uh, the things don't line up. Yes, just I so know. You know. Everyone switched for some reason. Mm. I don't know why. It's <laughs> we changed our names. Oh, you don't change your names. All right, we're, we're fixing that real quick. Anyway, but folks, welcome to D&D, Tower of the Mad Lich. We are going to be running a homebrew based off of Duralog's Tower. Uh, not the adventure, which I think was three, from 3.5. It's entirely homebrew, just kind of based on the concept of it. So, really excited for that. It should be a lot of fun. And we got some new players, and we're going to have a good time. So, stick around for that. We're going to have fun. So, welcome to D&D. Why is Raygun two people? Because Raygun... Because Raygun's not too special to be just one person. <laughs> it's called split person. Oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I have two people inside me. Sometimes I talk yes. like this. <laughs> sometimes I'm not like this. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes he's female and sometimes he's male. It just kind of goes back and forth. It really depends on like what he's feeling at any given second. Yep. He has dual personalities. So there's another player <laughs> with Raygun. She, she is playing Ada, the group. I am going to lower rhythm. Because golly, that is loud. Yeah. There we go. That is half. Much better. All right. So, welcome, folks. Yeah, I just lowered it a bunch. So, welcome to D&D. So, who would like to go first with introducing your character? I mean, I guess we can go in the row of avatars. Well, then, that, that means I am going first, I suppose. Um, my character's name is Jocelyn, and she is a halfling. Quite an old lady who rides on the back of a mastiff, um, whose name is Hyacinth. She was gifted to her by her late husband um, in a bouquet of flowers, and that is where the name has come from. She is a lovely lady, but she can be very tricky if you uh, let your guard down. Right. Thank you for the introduction. All right, then next up, uh, Reagan. Nice. Nailed it. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm Apollo, Dragonborn, monk. Uh, been a monk most of my life after my parents passed. So I just breathe fire and go about peacefully through the world. Beautiful. Thank you very much for the introduction. All right, Ada. When Nicole, you're up. Hi, I'm Ada. Uh, I'm a Tabaxi druid. I my character has traveled a lot and is really into um, history and botanical properties and stuff like that. And um, is kind of a loner in her mid to late thirties. And uh, <laughs> Not always super sweet to, to deal with, but, you know, she gets on all right. Uh, thank you very much. Next up, Just Harry, or Phil. Yes, I am Just Harry, and I am an evocation wizard, human, and, uh, <laughs> yes, I like to fireball my way out of uh, problems. I'm, yeah, there and basically I like, I like good mysteries. <laughs> there you are, they're their stereotypical meme character folks. And lastly <laughs> but not least, Yato. I'm Yato, I'm not very remembered, from the old village called Laurel. I just travel and quest. It used to be to support my family until it just became a hobby. Very nice. And together, you, these are the Guild of Adventurers. I don't know. We, we really think of a team name, but you all can think of a team name. <laughs> it's not really. Later. Necessary. That comes later. <laughs> exactly. But they are going to climb the Tower of Durlong, or Durlong's Tower, or also known as the Tower of the Mad Lich. Part 1. See what I did there? That was the title. I'm good. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah. 
So that's what happened. So we kind of, I kind of described the backstory of how y'all met. I'm just going to go through it real quick. So essentially, y'all were kind of been like around for a while. You've seen various posters and flyers and postings of this tower down in the south, just north of the green field, tuned from the volcanic rock and lava and magma coming from there. Created by a mad lich himself using magic and other means. Full of it is full of great treasure and plunder. Magic beyond belief. And I will lower the music first. So I have free love. I will lower it first. He's now at 10%. There we go. Yeah, I, I, I always put the music. I, I, have it, I think I have it low because it sounds good to me. And then it's always like overpowering. I'm like, like so quiet. And like, I barely hear it now. Oh well, it's more for you. Anyway, so yeah, the tower full of riches and glory and fame for anyone who can climb. Many have tried, none have succeeded, at least not that people know of. You all have kind of various, oh. for various means, have encountered these postings and flyers, and decided, hey, I want to try climbing for whatever personal reason it may be, for adventure, for glory, for wealth and fame. Those are all the references. Those are all the I players. Well, it's all up to you. But you've come together. Meet, meeting and decided, hey, let's form a party and do this together. We'll split the wealth and we'll have a good old time. Yes, the body is not connected because we're gonna because it'll be kind of disruptive. All right. <laughs> yeah, so that's where we left off. You've been traveling for several days south of Daggerfall, which is a larger kind of a trade city north of the tower. You've been traveling Ooh. for three days now, and you bet you are destined Ooh. to arrive at the tower tomorrow, according to your map. So that is how we start off that in the scene. The sun sets across the fields and, and forests as you go through this cleaving path that is laid with cobblestone before you. There's a campsite set to your side where you have set up. You got a nice little fire going and set up your tents for the evening. Well, what would you all like to do? Eat. To eat. Sleep. There is no game slash scene. This is it. Uh, we'll be praying with the... Uh to my patron sat with my trusty uh trusty hyacinth making sure she has lots of pets and fresh water and such Girl. uh basically we'll just sleep lying against hyacinth because she is so comfy and I'm old. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> so just Harry goes and sleeps without doing anything. Yeah. While Apollo eats, and eats his hearty meal cooked over the nice fire. And Jocelyn pets the Mastiff. Hi Hyacinth, I'm going to butcher that so many times. I apologize. Hyacinth has the pants okay. gently. He feels warm body, kind of radiate heat to you, keeping you nice and cozy despite the little cold. Hyacinth, so she. She, sorry. Uh, it's okay. I think Ada's gonna uh, set up a couple of her books because she always carries books with her and maybe set out her plants to check if they need water. Uh, you take out your plants and books. Checking them out, one of the plants does need a little bit of water, so you take some out of your skin and just eat, eat it. <laughs> you water it, give it what it needs, and then take out a book and by the by the firelight of the campfire, read a little bit before de de dozing off. That's I guess I'll just join Apollo in eating food. You eat food too. It is food. It tastes like food. Food. Mm. Fancy Standard that. road rations. You know, nothing to, nothing to write home about, but it's nutritious and filling. But you after a long walk, considering you spend most of the day traversing the walking. So, but it's quite, it refills you up and it makes you feel quite rested and satisfied. All right. So with that, then, you all kind of doing your various things, eventually go to bed and wake up the next day. Uh, the question is, who would like to set a watch during the evening? As all going to bed together maybe leads you open to anything that may happen in the night, as you are in the wilderness on the road. I don't mind. I'm, I'm, I can't see in the dark. I'm nocturnal, so I can see in the dark. Oh, I'm just an old lady. I can't expect me to stay awake all night. You can break it up so into, into shifts, oh. so you don't have to be up all night. <laughs> Phil's already gone. I'm Phil is just uh, out. Harry's gone. Harry, just Harry's gone. Oh. Just Harry is just sleeping. Yeah, Harry is really I, I holding his weight in the first part. Uh, <laughs> first watch. All right. 
So between Ada and <laughs> Apollo and Yao, you're gonna kind of take break it up into ships and kind of take it take the watch throughout the night. Well, Hyacinth, Hyacinth can uh, help with the uh, with the sleeping as well. She's a good dog. All right, and with the help of Hyacinth, the female master dog. <laughs> All right, so between the nights, I'm not gonna have you roll because we're not gonna start off like that. Yeah, between you all kind of wake, wake up the night, keeping a watch, listening out, kind of looking in case of any critters or perhaps even bandits on the road that may want to do nefarious things to you. Um, but fortunately for you, it is quiet and still throughout the night. You hear several sticks breaking through the woods, but you notice there all seem to be squirrels or raccoons or other nocturnal animals, such as uh, parrots, I believe. Which I don't know if parrots. A possum. Possum. I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm no zoologist. But you at least think they're possum. Yeah, but the, the night is calm, cool, and the sun begins to rise in the morning as it heats up the morning air. It's kind of it's pretty humid, but it's pretty nice out. Good, good weather for finishing off your hike. I would like to have possum watch before we set off. So before you leave, you find you look the, in the distance of several uh, pack, a litter, a litter of possum, chilling like a villain, eating some food as they prepare to kind of go in their holes for bed, as it, they are nocturnal, or at least they are now. Mm. Hmm. Right. So. I think uh, Ada's gonna need a, a cup of a hot cup of tea before she starts the day. So you rekindle the fire, or perhaps you kept it uh, going throughout the night. Keep that going, nice and warm. You put the kettle on there, heat up some water from your water skin again, pour it into a lovely cup, and enjoy yourself a nice pipe and hot cup of tea. Feel much more awake after that and ready to hit hit the day for all it's worth. What kind of tea you drink? Uh, herbal teas. Uh, I like black tea as well. So, uh, green Ooh, tea is actually probably my favorite. If you could make me a cup of tea as well, that would be that would be lovely. Speaking Absolutely. Of tea, cold this Next morning. Tea. Would anybody else like some tea? Aside from um, Jocelyn, anybody else like some tea? How about just Harry? Oh, yes, please. Uh, you got I'll have a little bit, please. All right. And Apollo? No. No, I'm okay. You're still upset about watching last night. I'm going <laughs> to stay up. All right. Start the water boiling and pouring everybody's tea. All right. So you get the kettle going this time, filling up a lot more as you are making now several cups of tea. You go ahead and get up, put the tea in, and let it seep for a few minutes, and pour over a nice hot cup of tea. It's quite stimulating, and it feels good. Nothing like a hot cup of tea in the morning. I don't have tea, people. <laughs> I did not prepare. Can I? Oh. Sorry. Uh... Can I? Can I send um, Hyacinth to go and see if she can sniff out breakfast? Uh, I don't know, like a like a rabbit or a something edible. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and roll a survival check. Uh, actually, yeah, a perception check, because you're trying to sniff it out, and with advantage, because he does have keen, she does have keen scent. Yes. Cool. So, the f wow, the first one is a total of five. Well, good thing you have that advantage. Was, that, was, that was good. I'm going to. Mm -hmm. So, for folks who don't know, the way advantage works is essentially what you do. When you roll a d20, which determines your stats or attacks, you roll a second one. And whichever of those two dice you roll... It's higher, you take that. For example, if I take my two dice here, I roll them in my dice tray. Whichever one here is higher, this one's a 15. This one right here on the camera. This one's a 19, so I would take this one right here because this, this is a 19. And disadvantage works the other way around. Uh, Hyacinth got a 12 uh, right. with advantage. So with the 12, she kind of, your dog kind of looks around sniffing. She does find a rabbit. Wonderful. Uh, oh, Yatta, go with go with Hyacinth and catch the critter for breakfast. <laughs> You're a lot faster than I am. All right, I'm gonna go then. Uh, you Thank go. you, child. You go following the. Uh, you see the rabbit in your sight. Okay, for. Uh. 
I can throw knives, right? Absolutely. They have a range of 20 feet without disadvantage and 60 feet with disadvantage. I'd like to throw a knife in, into the rabbit. Uh, yeah, you can get within 20 feet and you would hit. So go ahead and make a, a knife attack. It's going to be a range, so just like you make a normal knife attack, except you're throwing it. That is a 13. 13, that hits. This AC is um, exactly 10, if I remember correctly. So yeah, you hit. Two. You throw your knife, it goes through, hitting it right in its side as it kind of squirms around and darts off for a minute, but, but not getting too far as it kind of bleeds and dies from your wound. You're able to track it quite easily and find where it, find where it laid its last breath. You now have now rabbit, have rabbit. I go back to the camp and I, uh, who can cook here? Well, it depends who you ask. Who's if you ask Gaston, anyone can cook. <laughs> but who's a good cook here? Nope. I would say cooking is based off your survival stat. So with whoever has a high wisdom will probably be your better cook. Oh. Um. That would be me. All right, here you go. Oh, well, lovely. Thank you very much. I shall deal with that right away. All right, uh, so survival to skeleton stuff. This is regular old survival. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Where did my plus go? Uh, not particularly wonderful then, nine. Nine? Uh, you kind of do like a mediocre job. Mm. You do manage to scan it. You get, you get the pelt off. It's You kind of damage it though when you're doing it, but you still get it off decently. And there's enough meat oh, that you didn't yeah, kind of right do it, that you can That you all can have at least a little bit of a breakfast from it. Granted, not much because oh. there's one rabbit. Yeah, but, I mean, it's a hefty rabbit, but only one. But enough meal for a deal. To kind of make you somewhat satisfied. How far are oh, you? Charles poor hands in there, arthritis. Oh. I'm gonna have to teach you how to do this, Ada. All right, I'll I'll, I'll come watch. I uh, I've I've had a little experience cooking, but uh, I, I by no means would call myself a chef. Well, you don't need to be a chef to be able to cook. Just go with what your instincts say, although I shouldn't imagine that you really need to cook meat to eat it. <laughs> nah, I, oh, I, I guess I just worry about purifying it, you know, make, make sure it's clean. Oh, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Clean. Are we, all, are we all ready to set off? Yes. After oh, a... Yeah. Oh, hey, you're finally awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just Harry. Done it again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you all are ready to... So you all are good to... Ready to head out, is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. After a, another quick prayer. Put the saddle on Hyacinth. Give us some pets. All right, very well. So you do what you want, you do what you desire, and you begin setting off for your long day's walk. Uh, between the estimations of the map and what you've been told, it's only about half a day. So you should reach there by a little afternoon, maybe one or two o'clock. So you begin walking, setting out, and yeah, you keep walking, walking, walking. Feels like hours, because it has been hours. After, but after several, after stopping for a lunch, you see the tower off in the distance. A large, almost obsidian-like tower ascending exactly. from the carved, carved and hewn from the lava rock. As you see an active volcano behind it, kind of spewing lava, not very aggressively, but kind of slowly down its slope. They kind of go around, you see a rough path that kind of weaves between most of the magma that goes to the tower. I will show you the tower now. It is, on, it is currently on screen. But let me... Ooh. But that I will send it in the Discord too, so you all can. Picture all Discord. Picture the Discord. Yep, there you go. So you ah. can get a better view. But that, but that is what it, the area. Oh, no, it doesn't look like. nothing at all. 
<laughs> no, no, no. It is a dark tower. The kind of dark. The area around it is also dark, as if clouds are looming above it. However, there are no clouds, as it is a perfectly clear and bright and sunny day. But the area is still unexplainably dark. Several trees around it, some smoldering, most dead. But they are there. There's almost no sign of life. But the only thing you see is a figure, cloaked in flames, standing up atop a stone bridge that goes across that l a large pool of magma to the bridge. To the tower, sorry. On the bridge. Yeah, you'll get there in about an hour. Uh, let's say an hour. Okay. Are we so... gonna just like jump over magma and stuff and cross that? So you and... can see there is a bridge that goes from between the from the pool of the tower to the actual tower itself. But, but there is someone standing guard. There is someone yes. standing guard there. Yeah. Zoom in. Okie doke. Um. Probably got a spell for this. Give me one sec. <laughs> um, you having your way through the little lava flows there without getting harmed. It's kind of a path have a, thing. Have, in and out. have a look. We have enough time. We still got like forty minutes to go. Okay. Uh, can I go up to the old man? I'll like, you know, ask the guys to like hold back a sec. And uh, ride up to uh, to the the guy on the bridge. Um, uh, I'm gonna wave hello. Like, hello, young man. I don't suppose you could give me the closest toilet. It's <laughs> oh, it's it's really it's really quite awful. Um, and I would be ever so grateful if you could help me. Oh, you have such lovely eyes underneath that helmet of yours. Um, and cast Charm Person, uh, second level. Second level, he needs to make a Wisdom save, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so it's a 13. Okay. I'm going to re-roll that. I can't quite get over there. All right, that is, he rolled a 10. After his modifiers, that is an 11. He fails. He is charmed. Wonderful. So you see this cloaked figure with his hand hand upon his sword like this, resting on the ground. It's a great sword, cloaked in a flame. Man appears to be wearing some type of plate armor, maybe. Also, flame kind of ruining from it. You see two red, fiery eyes beneath it as he slowly turns his head. Hello. Yes, there is a bathroom on the inside. I suppose you can. <laughs> Would it be okay if my companions come as well? That they, they have to help me. I'm I'm awfully old, you see. <laughs> I see. Yes, uh, your companions may assist you. Be careful. Do not very, swan very it. much the first appreciate door on it. The left. Oh, I appreciate it. Can Can you tell me the name of the person that lives here, just so I can say thank you? The name of the person who lives here, resides in this tower, is Durlog himself. Oh, is he... is he... is he... is he someone of no... is he? That could be said. Oh, I don't suppose he, uh, is he, is he very strong? Strength measured by any other means compared to him. So he doesn't have any weaknesses. I am a guardian. I do not know him personally. Oh, that's a shame. It's awful when employers don't get to know their staff. Well, thank you very much. Start toddling over the bridge. <laughs> what the heck? Well. <laughs> I, mean, I tried, guys. I tried. Works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to be the boss. I can't come in tomorrow. Sorry. Hey, I mean, you got past the first trial. Congratulations. Hey. Just cast Aww. Aww. And you failed the I wanted to kill him. <laughs> oh, don't attack him. Oh, it'll all go wrong. Oh, <laughs> you do that with are we able to just pass the fist? That's true. Uh, potentially. I mean, if you were like... Uh, there are going to be some fights. I mean, you could try. You could certainly try. I, will not, I, will, I won't say it's impossible. 
<laughs> but doing no. a pacifist run. Pacifist up to you guys. Any percent. All right, it's up to you, folks. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So what's it like in this tower? Yeah, I'm Let's speed know. run. Sorry, go in. You, as he is charmed by <laughs> death. Or um, by yes. the castle. Yes. Go do your business and be gone. Thank I you. I have to guard, make sure people don't come in the town. <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> We're so sorry for, for interrupting you and stopping you from doing such an excellent job. <laughs> well, thank you, Granny. I appreciate it. Gee, my, my job is underappreciated. I have to stand here all day next to this hot magma, which doesn't really bother me, but, you know, the sight of it gets old. Like this tower, oh. killing people who attempt to come in if they're not worthy or strong enough. It's like, you know, kids just Wait. try to come in because they think there's gold here. And then I kill them and put their bodies in the magma. Oh, you know, it's good cleanup, but uh, very because boring. <laughs> Some green you, room would be a very you, good idea. It, it would. It, well, are you not scared of being thrown into the magma yourself? Do I look like magma is a concern to me? As you see him just still cloaked in fire, as if he is made of fire himself. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, smell. I don't... Uh, okay. So you so this is sort of more of a perfect kind of place for you then. I like the temperature, but as you can tell, I'm quite some hot stuff. You weak for it. She's gonna do that thing. She just goes, oh, oh, you! I'm old enough to be your grandmother. Oh, uh, and she's gonna, she, she's gonna laugh a little bit, and then and then she'll just be like, oh, I really have to go to the bathroom now, and. We're gonna. We're actually gonna leave now. <laughs> you open the, the two guard's volcanic like, ash door, re revealing a. Um, a hold on, let me pull up my name. Oh shit! What was that guy's name? You never asked. <laughs> no, damn it! I He's not gonna get a review on you. Yeah, pull, no. Pulling up a 15 foot wide corridor. You see two doors on the left. Uh, as is, uh, or at least you think you can. Uh, it is dark. It is dark in here. Anyone who has dark vision sees it as dim light. Everyone who does not have dark vision cannot see anything. So those who have dark vision see two doors on the left. The one directly next to it appears to have a sign that says a ba bathroom on it. And there's another oh, one on the no. left. <laughs> and, and then there's another door on the right. And, then it, it, and it continues down a little bit further before it reaches a T-junction and narrows. So that's, and that is all you can see from here the, for those who have dark vision. Those who do not. Uh, those humans and such. I think I think just Terry is the only one who does not have dark vision. I no. Uh, you don't have it either. No, so I need a turn. Uh, uh, All right. So I... Apollo and Harry oh, do not have dark vision, so you do not see anything. I... It is dark. I also don't have dark vision. You also do not have dark vision. Okay. So the only <laughs> people who see this are Ada and Yato. <laughs> uh, wait, does my dog have dark vision? The mascot does not have dark, dark vision. No! But he has dog smell. vision. Or she, she has dog vision. vision. She can smell real good, though. So, I mean... She can certainly smell. And she does <laughs> smell something in there. However, you do not speak dog. I mean... Don't I? Oh! Do you? Did you take that warlock? I don't know. <laughs> Evocation? I so. Oh, I can't oh, remember. Oh, 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 there's also a druid oh. with you. I, oh! Yeah, true, there's I a druid with me! <laughs> Oh. Uh, so as no you all balls. walk in, no, the door closes behind you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel yeah, the force of the stone doors know. that they lock in place. Bruh. It's dark. L literally the start of any kind of horror movie. <laughs> the <door closes>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through the door. <laughs> Oh, the door closed behind us. What are we gonna do? Keep going. <laughs> Just charm the door. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. Anyway. I don't know what's going on. If you, if you have torches, you may light torches. If you have light spell, you can cast that. Feel free. I will light the torch. I will light a torch for the people who can't see. Uh, Yato, the person who can see, lights a torch for the people who can't see. You can now see about 40 feet, 20 feet bright light, 20 feet dim. Which is enough to get you to see about what the people with dark vision see. We're seeing. 
However, you do now it's now with a better light, even with those dark vision. Uh, every when you have dark vision, everything's kind of monochrome, so you can't. So it's like black and white. So you can't quite see a yeah. lot of detail, oh. but you can kind of make out. Things. I've got a spell. Yes. Prestidigitation. Yeah. Prestidigitation. Can very I use nice. that? You can use that to light fires. It light a big light. bonfire in the middle of the hallway. Yeah, dancing lights cr is creates lights. I mean, so does light. Press can, can just light stuff. Can't see. Light in oh, the air. But the um, uh, Yato did light a torch, so you can you can see now. And now with the torch light, everything's a little oh. more visible for you. Uh, you kind of see it looks like there's like some type of gas coming from the second room on the left. Oh. And you and now when you get closer to, you smell the foul smell of poison in the air, and you hear what sounds oh. like a hacking noise or a humming. Mm -hmm. Coming from in there, but slightly muffled, as if the person humming is wearing some type of mask. Uh, and there's also a door on your right. And well, well, the bathroom in the first door on left. It's safe to assume that this poison is lethal, right? Essentially. So you smell the scent of poison. Um, if, if you would like, you can make a survival check to determine if it's like an aerosol poison or it's just there's poisons in that room. Don't I have that answer? Survival check. Mm -hmm. Yes, the AI. I, believe, uh, I believe you do have proficiency in survival, so you, it'll be good. It'll be good for you. I don't. The druid may be good to do. This. I was gonna say, what? What? Don't I have like perception? I can kind of sense that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, so this, yeah, actually, yeah, make a perception. I'll have you make a perception check. You're quite familiar with herbs and nature, which are poison, which are poisons are derivative from. So why not? I'll have you make a perception check. Wait. I've been around for a long time. Does that count? <laughs> Depends. Did you like poisoning people? Okay, let me roll. I mean, Were you particularly good no. at herbalism? Okay. Uh, it's a, uh, 11 and then my perception is plus 6. So, 17. Perfect. So, with the 17, you sniff it out, kind of smell a little bit more. It doesn't appear to be aerosolized poison. It's just, it smells like there's someone who's making poison or using poisons in the upper room. And there appears to be a, quite a bit. I'm curious now. Curiosity killed the cat. Still hear humming coming from Interesting. Interesting. I can, I can, like, quietly go over there and look for you guys, if you like. I'm very stealthy. I could also... I, I, I could go knock on the door. No. 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 <gasps> oh, I like could go and knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? You're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> now we're getting the guy outside. Like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Bethany, go, be friendly. go knock on the door. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um. So. All right. Will you guys stay just like round the sides of the door? Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> Ask them what they're cooking. Somewhat quietly. Yeah. I would like to. I. I get to you cast mage armor at will. So I would like to um pop that on myself. All right. You would cast mage armor um, yourself. As a spectral armor yeah. all, uh, kind of fades in around you. Yeah. So it I mean it's you know, it's cool. And then I'm gonna uh and then I'm gonna knock the door. You knock on the door. <laughs> Just give it a really soft, ten gentle like tapping. Give her a voice. <laughs> oh is it? Uh, uh hello. Oh, I think I'm a little bit lost, it's very dark in here. Oh, yeah, yes, come in, come in. I, I, I can't hear you. What? Yes, it's the bathroom. Come in, the door is open. Uh, is this the bathroom? I don't want to walk in if you're using the toilet. This is not the bathroom. Where is the bathroom? There's a door <laughs> on the left. Every time. Okay. It's very, very dark out here. Can you just, can you, can you just open the door? I can't, I can't see the door handle. Very well. So you hear, ping 
like sounds like blades or metal moving. And then you hear footsteps. Boom, boom, boom. Well, as he walks through the I door, as it creeps Stepping open, back. Silence. As the door opens, you are greeted by a, a man cloaked in black leather. We are we're oh. a bird beak on face. What would look like a plague doctor? Who was? You um. can't find the bathroom, you say. Why don't you come in here and I will give you a map? That would be lovely. Uh, I got told it was close, so I, I don't think I need a full map. Also, it kind of smells in there. What are you cooking? So you look around him. You see what looks like a fur bowls on the table. Um, dead, but recently killed. The inside is kind of taken out of it being experimented on. Several syringes are jutting from the cork. Oh, and let me read. That's my description here. You see shelves filled with potions, brews, poisons of all sorts of alchemical items and devices. There are counters that surround the back and right wall, with an exam table in the middle containing said fur bowl. Aha. 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 Cool. Aha. Uh, can I make. Oh, like a medicine check or anything, or like an investigation to see if I can tell what's happening. Absolutely, make a medicine check. Anyone who has a proficiency in medicine uh, is welcome to do that. Uh, or even I do don't. I don't have proficiency, but I do have a plus. You can get this. I mean, you can see and guess what's going on here. Okay, cool. That would be a nineteen total. Fantastic. You look, you kind of recognize, you know, this definitely ain't a great doctor. He seems to be doing some type of experiments on, on the court. Injecting with things you can tell by the syringes, opening up with the organs. You know, all sorts of unwholesome things. Nothing, well, well, yes, bad things. Nothing too crazy, just, you know, medical experiments. Oh, well, that looks very interesting, young man. Are you a... Are you a scientist injecting and potions? I'm trying to give everybody as much information I can without, like, <laughs> giving away that I'm talking to them. Oh, that's... Did you say he was holding something? Was he holding a sword or something? He's not holding anything, although one of his hands does appear to be behind his back. Oh, I see. Well, you're a... You're a very tall, strong-looking man. Oh, woman, I don't, I, I, go after ready. I, I don't, I don't want to assume. I get my fire burst ready. You get your I fire get my hand ready. ready. Ah, you Can get you just... your things right. <laughs> don't. Could you just point me in the direction of the bathroom? It's getting quite serious. Come in and I will show you where the bathroom is. He beckoned you uh, with the, the hand that's not behind his back. Can I... Do I trust him? Probably not. <laughs> Ooh, that's the question. Um, I'm gonna be like, uh, no, thank you. I don't want to get that smell on my clothes. <laughs> and I'm gonna like give a uh, higher synthesis signal to kind of like jump back out of the way. Um, that's up. <laughs> and pro and then probably. Try and cast it like you know, it's been a few years, you know, like I don't know, like like the tapping of the feet kind of thing. Jump backwards and cast firebolt in its face. All right, roll it's everyone, signal. roll in the initiative. <laughs> oh. Where are we all rolling? Is just he got four. Nice roll out Everybody, mm -hmm. everyone, roll uh, I got a I got a I got I rolled a fourteen. Very nice. Fourteen. Looks like I need to write all these down. I need a notepad. Alright, so Oh I got nine. I also got a nine. Oh no. Bethany, uh what'd you get? You got all right, you got a fourteen. Ten. You got a ten. I got a two. You and Ray Gun. Well, I should see D twenty right. I'll do the next one. Uh, Raygun and, and Nicole, you both got nine? Yep. Yes. And what'd you get, Phil? Wait, it's a d20, right? Yep, you roll a d20, add your dexterity to it. 
Oh, adding dexterity. Um, oh, your initiative. Wait, my dexterity modifier? Yeah, your dexterity modifier. Oh, no, I didn't have that written down. I got 18 then. My dexterity is 14. That's a plus two. All right, 16. We got 16. All right, so the turn order is as follows. Phil, followed by Art, Bethany, Raygun, and Shark, and then lastly, the Plague Doctor himself, Lad. If, uh, before anything happens, can I roll, uh, let's say, investigation to see if there are any, like, flammable gases in the room? Yes, you may. Uh, that'd be a perception. Perception? Yes, sir. I turned about. Natural 20. Natural 20, all right. So you get, you look around, you notice that it's, while there are many, many much things in this room, Sense of things, you can kind of see some gases. Nothing quite flammable, at least not that you can notice with your eyes. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll go for the guy who breathes fire. Could <laughs> <laughs> be flammable things. But top, but top of the round, just Harry, you're up. He stands at the door within an arm's reach of Jocelyn, the half elf. Not the half elf, the halfling. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to start off. For Tom! And I cast firebolts. Firebolt or ball? Bolts. Firebolt. All right, make a weapon attack. Or make a range weapon. Rain, range? <laughs> very, very happy it's not fireball. <laughs> He's an evocation. <laughs> hey, what am I rolling? So you're, ro you're rolling on um, your spell attack. So D D10. Mm -hmm. uh, D20 to see if you hit, and then it's a D10 for damage. Okay. So I start off by shouting for Tom and then I attack. All right. I've rolled a t net 20. You rolled a natural 20 on the dice? Yeah. All right. So you critically hit him. You don't need to add your modifier. Although your modifier is, uh, do you know what your spellcasting modifier is? Uh, no. So your spellcasting modifier is your intelligence plus, plus your proficiency. Nice. My intelligence plus my proficiency. Yep, your intelligence modifier, which I believe you have a plus four in your intelligence, and your and your proficiency modifier should be plus three. Plus three, so it should be eight plus uh, eight. I'm oh, sorry, a seven. Uh, plus seven. So plus three for proficiency. And plus four for your intelligence for a total of plus seven to your spellcasting attack. Ooh. I want to have that one written down. You're gonna be using that one a lot. Yeah, <laughs> writing it, writing it down. Yep, and we'll get into spell saves uh, for you later. All right, so you cast Fireball into critical hit. It goes directly into his chest. So roll damage. And now since it's a critical hit, uh, we're doing the standard way. So you're going to roll 2d10. You roll double dice. Wait, it, it's, it's already 2d10 because it's I'm level 5, right? Yes, it is. So four, it'll be 4d10. So you would double the normal amount of dice you would roll for damage. You just got to really hit him up. All right. Or... It went in his face and it burned his face out. That's what it did. I got a four, a two, and a three. So nine. All right. Oh, no, wait, that was only three. Yeah, you need to roll one more, buddy. <laughs> What's and a five. Like? 25 damage? Or you got five? Uh, that would be 14 total. So far, all right, so you hit him. You cast your fireball at him. It goes directly into his chest. You kind of see him pat himself out as the letters seem to absorb most of it. However, you deal 14 points of fire damage to him. Yowch. You hear him kind of yelling at you. Ah! As you see how the, what was holding behind, what, the hand that was holding behind his back pulled, has a dagger coated in poison. And then with his other hand, now kind of free. Well then, guess we're doing this the hard way. He pulls out another dagger, also coated in poison. All right, next up is Art. Or Yato. Um, would I be able to pull sneak attack on him since Bethany's standing next to him? Yes, there is. You are going to have to shoot through some allies here, which may be a little difficult, but, I will, um, but I'm not going to give you disadvantage. But there is a risk you may shoot if you roll really poorly. You roll one. 
As in, uh, I am going to run up to him. But thank you. What's the, would that still do sneak attack? Yeah, if you if you're within... use your yeah melee range, or if you, I think you can do it with a short bow too. Yeah, I'm gonna go within melee range with him. All right. So now and he's then, in the doorway. Yeah. So just kind of so like here's the doorway. So he's here. Bethany's right there. So you can go past, but you're gonna have to kind of squeeze through the doorway to get to him. Because Bethany is currently standing in the middle of the doorway. Okay. So I didn't that. jump out of the way. You didn't jump? I thought you said the dog jumped in the way. N no, I'm on the dog. The dog jumped out of the way because I'm okay, yeah, on the, the dog. Then the, then the doorway is clear. You're just the space behind that guy. So yeah, then you can do that. Yeah, you can yeah. Go up there and smack him. Smack. Uh, 12 plus dex. That would be 16. All right, 16 does hit. So I do, I hit with my rapier. That would be the damage of the rapier plus sneak attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll give you sneak attack. Why not? Let's see some damage. One. So it's 1d8 for the rapier and then 2d6. 1d8. That is 4. Okay. And then 3d6. That is 6. 4. Dice gone off the table. Hmm. I'm going to reroll that one. You don't count four, Six, dice, four, and three. And three, very well. Uh, yeah, so you quickly hop on the way, stabbing, stabbing him in the abdomen as his kind of blood begins to kind of come out. Uh, you see, that definitely looks like it hurt as he's now bloody. Your next kid. Oh, sorry. Your next I... kid. You're the muffled man. Bonus action disengage <laughs> and back away a bit. All right, bonus action, you disengage, going back, back and away. As he attempts to swing at you, but you disengage, blocking it. Your sword. All right, anything else, sir? Uh, no. All right, next up, Bethany, the Warlock. You're up. Woo! <clears throat> okay. I... Would also like to cast Firebolt on the guy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'd like to move back approximately 20 feet um, and then go ahead and cast Firebolt. Right. So you move back, back to the edge, end of this hallway, uh, kind of like this long corridor. And you cast Fireball Damage, so go ahead and roll for attack. Uh, 21. That hits. His AC, after hitting him a couple times, you know his AC 16. Wonderful. Uh, do, 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 do. So that's uh, straight 10 damage. Right, all right. Describe Fire. your killing blow. Oh, wicked. <laughs> uh, so just, you know... Hyacinth backs up, and the old lady's kind of going, Fuck arthritis in my hands. <laughs> you were very mean! <laughs> Just kind of goes, uh, as it smacks into him, uh, melting off his mask, hopefully, because. Yes, it, you it know. right in the face and melts off Fire Match, revealing this kind of deformed and burned face from various asses and such. Not a very good looking guy. What an unfortunate face. No wonder he wears the plague doctor mask. <laughs> yeah. Dear God. Oh gosh, I appear to have hurt him. Oh. Yes, uh, he falls to the down. It's all right. He falls to the ground, quite dead. <laughs> it's all right. It's either he hurt us or we hurt him. We got the yeah. better out of him. Oh, I, I know, but still. Now he's just dead. Oh, my. <sighs> Alright, yeah, so that ends combat. <laughs> as you, see, you can now enter this room freely. In which, you, as you look around, you see various of uh, what I described earlier. You also see a map on the back deck. Oh, he wasn't lying. There was actually a map. He was not lying about the map. There was an actual map there. Um, I... You probably... I'm not gonna go in the room. I'm gonna 
uh, Hyacinth and Gertrude, uh, Gertrude? <laughs> Hyacinth and Jocelyn are gonna stand in the doorway and just look at, keep an eye out. All right. Would anyone else like to go in the room, or are y'all just gonna stare in? I would like to um, get uh, one of my thicker fabrics out of my bag, cover okay, it around buddy. my nose and mouth, and I would like to go into the room. All right, so you go into the room after wrapping your face with this cloth. It's still quite noxious, but you, you're, you, the cloth is definitely helping with the smell. You don't gag as much. So you can see right, there's also a plague doctor's body. You look around, you see he has uh, f four daggers on him, all covered with poison, as well as a uh, vial of poison on him. I'd like to uh, loot him. All right, you may add those to your inventory. Uh, the poison on the dagger does 2d6 poison damage after a DC 11 con save. And half as much Poison on daggers. a uh, speed save. You said four of them, right? If there are four of them in total. And the poison does 2d6 poison damage uh, after a DC 11 constitution saving throw. And they do half as much on a, on a successful save. And uh, a vial of poison. And one vial of poison, and poison does the same damage. And one ounce, you can coat one weapon with it or three arrows. I'd like to go up and grab the map as well. Uh, you grab the map. It is now shown. It's kind of like Anything a hand-drawn map. Room? I'm going to post it in the Discord real quick. All right. Anything else in the room? Yes, I'll you do find various other potions and poisons in here. Uh, mm. Can I find anything that would help? Uh, what kind of potions do I see? So you find three bottles of the, like actual potions. You find one, a potion of healing, quite handy. A potion of poison resistance. And a potion of potion. That's all it's labeled as. Potion of potion. Potion of potion. All right, so <laughs> I grab them all <laughs> as of healing. Potion of poison resistance and the po potion of potion. Potion of potion. I head out the room as fast as possible now. You book it. Is that like an absolute mad lad. All right. Yeah. Uh, there's also, I also mentioned, there's uh, also several bottles of other poisons in there if you wanted to take those or look at those. Oh, wait. Uh, I grab a couple more vials or bottles. Just just a couple random ones? There are several different types of vials and bottles. Uh, tell me about them. All right, so there is about five little vials, kind of like ones that you found there, like look like almost like eye drop shape, and they hold about one ounce so instead of feel like a green liquid. There is one slightly larger one that is a kind of a weird reddish green color, kind of like a weird mix. It looks quite gross. And then there is one that's kind of fancy, but it's purple. God, so many choices. I grab every single one. All right, you can add those seven bottles to your inventory. So, how many vials of poison were there? Seven. There were five regular ones. Wow. One, uh, one, a greenish. Greenish brown, I said. Greenish brown bottle, and then one a fancy one with purple liquid. And they're all one ounce vials. Vial of greenish brown poison, vial of purple poison. All right. All right, but that's about we'll it for think here. about there's, them later. That sounds good. There's various alchemical stuff in here, but unless you're um, are proficient in alchemy, you're not much. You really else you can go do. I'm not proficient. I'm heading Could out be. the room. Stinky. All right. So you head out the room. And you is exactly as the map is shown on the uh, in the Discord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you are back in that main hallway oh. down south. Sorry. We're in the. Oh, we were just in the poison room, right? That room first off to the left. Oh, uh, next. My mistake, sorry. 
one of my invocations is um, double sight, so I can actually see in the dark. Fantastic. You see everything I've described before. Yes. <laughs> I still yeah, haven't missed much. Pardon? Yeah, hi, buddy. You still have the torch that I lit. Yeah. Uh, there's also some sort of archery room to the right. You guys want to go check that out? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, could I crack open the door to have a look at what's inside? Go ahead, roll stealth. Take a lounge room. I'm hoping this is something you're good at. Nat you are the rope. Natural 20. Hmm. All right, check you got tell me what step plus your deck? I can, I'm literally not touching my dice. I can get my camera if you like. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Uh, what, what's that plus your deck? Uh, dexterity. I've got a plus eight in stealth because I'm proficient right. in it as well. Wait, so I'm that's... sorry, the DC was 30. You failed. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, Holy so yeah, cow. Finally Damn. open the door without making it the slightest sound. Not even a breath. What you see in there? Do you have dark vision? Yes. You see the kind of monochrome silhouette of two skeletons that appear to have six arms each. Oh. Just close that door again. In each hand is a, is a light crossbow per hand. Uh, There's six I, crossbows I, in I, each hand. I whisper... Wait, hey guys, uh, I don't yeah. think we should be here, or in this room in particular. There are um, six-handed skeletons with a crossbow for each of their six hands. I really Let's wish the words that you'd whispered were, Hello there, General Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> what else is in the room? I, I will... I have a, I have another gander. What else is in the room? So what you see is kind of some stones and rubble throughout the area, but also a broken table. Yeah. So, and all, many bones and other short bows. Of what color of the floor here? It smells of dank fermented, dank and fermented meat. Yeah. There's also a table, a broken chair. On the table, it looks like there's an ink well, and maybe some paper. Ooh. Oh, that's all you can really. Uh, I. See. There is some paper on the table, and uh, the table's a bit broken. There's a broken chair, but it's guarded by two massive skeletons with six arms. With a six yeah, I'm good. Uh, are you guys up to maybe skip this room? The paper could be important. I'm curious of the paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, who can punch the hardest? Me. All right, go in there. Okay, I guess I'll walk in then. So you just casually walk in? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm a monk that punches things. I can't, like, sneak in. <laughs> My stealth is garbage. Fair enough. All right, you <laughs> casually walk in. Hello, boys. <laughs> Essentially, roll initiative. Here we go again. 13. All right, I'm going to roll for two. We're going to roll two dice. 22. All right. That's... I can't... There we go. All right. So you're just going to have to tell me those numbers in one second. I'm putting them into the initiative. All right. So what would you get, Art? 22. 22. Nice. Stephanie, what would you get? 11. 11. All right. Uh, Nicole? <clears throat> 19 plus 3, so... 21. 22. 22. Sorry, not 21. Very nice. Phil? I got... Hold on, let me give me another number. Uh, yeah, that would be six. You got a six. And last but not least, Reagan, what'd you get? Thirteen. Thirteen. Alright. No one is surprised as you just kind of casually meandered into the room and they, well, clearly saw you walk in. So, top of the round, Art, followed by 
um, Ada, then Skeleton 1, then Raygun, Bethany, Skeleton 2, and Phil. I like the fact that I walked in and I'm not going first. I know, right? Welcome I'm to like, initiative. Hey, boys. Just hey, two <laughs> Shoot this. Hey, you're just preparing your uh, inner monk. Uh, so, we now have a torch in the room. Describe the appearance of the skeletons. So the skeletons like, appear to be kind of larger than you. Well, many things are. But they're a little bit larger than the average human. They have, have four other arms kind of taped on. Like kind of tacked on to their bodies. Each one wielding a crossbow. You see two quivers of cross of light crossbow bolts on both sides of their hips. So unnaturally, they have six arms? Unnatural, or... yes. Oh gosh. Uh... Could oh well, that's okay. Is there anything like are there like is there like how many bones are connecting those other four unnaturally taped on arms? Taped on. <laughs> Which <laughs> gaff is that tape. <laughs> yeah, gaff tape. Uh, so, they're they're like they're kind of fused on via bones, but it doesn't look they don't appear to be very sturdy. Perhaps if someone, perhaps if you got a good hit with your sword, you could knock one off. Could I shoot for the um, shoot for the crossbow bolts quivers mm -hmm. to break the quivers and get rid of their crossbow bolts? Sure. Since you're hitting something and targeting a specific thing on a small person, you are gonna the DC is gonna be higher than their AC. All right. You're gonna make a weapon attack. You're gonna have to get over um, what the DC is, which I'm gonna set, which I have right here. And yeah, and let's see if you can hit that. It's kind of a small target, and it is dark, even with the torchlight. So go ahead, and make your oh. weapon attack. I rolled a <laughs> a nine total. So you kind of knock your arrow quickly. Two, you fire. It goes right between his legs, kind of missing where you're aiming. He seems unfazed and perhaps maybe a mildly amused by your attempt. It's hard to tell considering he has no facial features. It's just skeleton and skull. So what can I do with a bonus attack or bonus action? By the road, you can disengage. You can dash. Uh, if you have a wep if you have a light weapon in your offhand, you currently are have a ranged weapon. You can make a second attack, but it's a little different. You don't add your modifier to it except for the attack. Uh, but, and there's also, also spells that have casting of that and other features that your class may have. Um, Are you just a straight up rogue, Art? I am a mastermind rogue. Well, I walked in Hold on. Oh, can I throw just one of my oil flasks am I wrong? in the middle of the skeletons? Uh, that would be an action. That would oh. be another attack. You because you're throwing stuff actively, just like just like you'd be throwing a javelin or something. All right. Did he use the bonus action to get out of his bag? Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, I do that. Thing. I prepare it. Ah, uh, you get you get your flask of oil out and you prepare. Apollo, you got your fire breath ready. <laughs> Have your fire ready? Yeah. All right. Next. Nice. Next up, that'd be Ada, the druid. You're up. Uh, so were these skeletons actually doing anything, or were they just like against the wall, just like posed? They were standing. Or they actually menacing. They were what? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they, were, they were not actually like animated or attacking us. Well, they're right. animated, and they are certainly attacking you now, as you see all six of the crossbows from each of them now pointed at you guys. Okay. Um, oh, boy. This it definitely good. looks like there's intent to shoot. I mean, I kind of tend to be a pacifist, but I suppose I could maybe claw at them. You I could? have a melee of claws. So, can I do that? Yes, you can. Uh, you also do have your weapons and such. Uh, you feel free to use that. You also have some cantrip spells. Um, I'm a pacifist. I just I don't want to have to attack. 
Uh, you, you don't have to. You can use some of your spells if you want to buff your allies. I think you, we did give you a couple that were support. But feel free to look, look through your list and see what you have there. We got du Druid Craft. Oh, Entangled. That's true. Can I use Entangled? Absolutely. We get both of them. Hmm. What was that? It would get both of them. Okay. I'm gonna... I wanna entangle, entangle them. Alright, uh, and that requires a saving throw, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, can you tell me what it is and what the DC is? Um, it's 14. The DC strength? is 14? Strength. Perfect, thank you very much. Alright, so they're gonna go ahead and make their strength saving throws. Let's see. Uh, that's a fail, and that's a fail. They both failed and are entangled and restrained by your spell. As you see all these vines kind of go and start rising from the ground, entangling. Good grab. job, team. Yeah, they are now restrained. It's time to punch shit really hard. All right. The one there. Very well. That's what, you do. that's what you're going to do. Sounds good. Next up in the initiative is... The skeleton, uh, he's he's gonna go ahead and make a strength check and attempt to try to break out of the vines here. Uh, unfortunately, oh, he gets no. attacked and does not, and that uses his action. He cannot do anything else on his turn. Yay. He gave him the right to attempt to All right, break next out. Next up, Paulo, you're up. All right, so how, how exactly are these uh, skeletons stand like side by side or? So they're stand, they're kind of like side by side, like a little staggered, but a couple feet apart. Uh, but they're kind of, you could probably hit both of them, yeah. There's about, like, five feet between them. You could stand between them and hit both if you want to. The sacred arts of spinjitsu. <laughs> Let me check one real quick. Brown Towson, Brown Towson. Mm -hmm. How hard, hard did you say they were? How hard? How far apart were they? So there is a five-foot gap in between them. All right, perfect. So you could stand in there and go... So, with them being five foot apart, I'm going to use my, uh, my, uh, fire breath, which is a 30 foot line and is five foot wide. All right. So you got to kind of like move to the side and so they can get both in the same line? Yep. All right. So, Even with the entangle, I think you should, yeah, the area is difficult terrain because of the entangling plants, but I think you should still have enough movement. If it's not very far. So they need to make a dexterity save of 13. Okay. Let's see. Um, And they both failed. Wow, these and guys both, can't roll well. They will both take six. I mean, they're skeletons. Points of uh, fire damage. All right, so they both take six points of fire damage each. And then for my second action, I'm just gonna punch one of them. All right. Probably so we'll punch the closest one. We'll say that's number one. Yeah. Go ahead, and make attack. As you see, uh, kind of your fire breath roars through them, catching both of them in this flame, singeing the vines, but they still hold true. Okay. And then my punch will do. I roll a seven. Roll a seven. So... It does not hit. Dang. Good job, I'll follow. Now, now I'm standing right next to him. After you give out a, a large, hearty, hearty um, burp from breathing out fire, you take your fist and kind of trip up on the vine slightly and lose your fitting, uh, footing and miss your punch. The, one, the vines went too wide. That's all right. Anything else on your turn, sir? Nope, that's everything. Very, very well. Next up, the warlock, Jocelyn. I think one of my traits is that I can just tell if there's magic around. Yep. You can just I think it, I've, um, copy it, copy yeah, it. I've oh, man. I think I've just got to detect magic. Um, I don't want to be able to like see this be able to, for the skeletons to see me yet, but can I tell if the skeletons are magical? Yeah, so you cast it at will. And you can definitely, there is definitely necromantic magic coming from these sellers. 
Okay. Oh, so, so they're not your average oh, no. Minecraft skeleton. They've been <laughs> summoned. Yeah, so I, I, feel, I feel like my uh, detect magic is just going to be on at all times. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You can just say, hey, I want to detect magic, and I'll say what you see. Okay, cool. Neat. Um... Can I cast an actual spell? Mm -hmm. so if I will, come so around... Take your action. You just... Check magic, you just see it. Like you squint awesome. really hard. Awesome, alright. I'd like to come around the corner and... Uh, cast... Oh no, I've only got one of those. Just go oh, I've got... No, I've got two of... I uh, know, uh, I was gonna see if I could cast a spell magic on one of the skeletons. Yeah, but you only got two spells uh, on it, that's a warlock. Let's you just, just save that for later. Yeah, I know. Wait, how many spells do I have? You have four first, three second, and two thirds. Unlimited mm. spells. Well, What's... it's weird because it says, it says at will for like Basically yeah, so that's all of them. Uh, that just is really thing. confused. So the way I read at will is just you. Can, it's like you. You like kind of like squint your I eyes won't. and then you just kind of do it. You just do at will. Doesn't cost <laughs> action. Or any resources, you, just, you just say I want. You just will it to happen. It just happens. It's like say you want to look to your right. You just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I figured that, but I. It's I've never played a warlock before, and this the the spell things kind of all good. So weird. does spell yeah. slot mean you can cast that level spell that amount of times, right? Yes. So you have to use the spell. You use the spell slot corresponding to the spell level, or if you want upcast, you use that spell, and then you remove it. Think of it like bullets. You have special bullets for each one. Keep and track you fire, of your mage you don't get those back to a long rest unless you use a special ability. So keep track of your mage bullets, otherwise the DM has the right to eat your dice. I will eat your dice. So, could you use a first slot for your third no. level spells? It, it no, only okay. works from yeah. bigger spells into smaller. You can't cast a smaller... You can't cast... You can't use a third level spell at first level. Yeah, I have to cast... Yeah, you can upcast, level. but you can't downcast. Exactly. Uh, okay, you cool. can cast, say... Um, cure wounds at third level, but you can't cast fireball at first. It'll okay. be a very small fireball. It's just fireball at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll you just cast fireball as a cantrip. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna pop my head around the corner and just be like, oh, for Pete's sake, can I try um and like aim for the crossbows? Like the arm joint more specifically to try yeah, and like burn up the, the crossbows. Weak. Yep, it's gonna be a, a similar thing as as Art was trying to hit the quiver. I think it's gonna be a higher DC than their armor class, so you can. It's fine. Cool. No worries. Boop. Sweet. Twenty five. That hit. Oh yeah. So you aiming like for one of the arms or the crossbows? Yeah, for the for like the joint where the arm where all the arms attach. All right. So you hit to the, the body. Phew, hit it right, yeah. it right clean. And you knock three of the arms off. Uh, do you want to hit the, the skeleton? There's like one skeleton right by where Raygun is, and there's another one a little further up. It's, uh, um, can I cast two? Or... You can only hit one of them. Which one you would you like? Uh, the... I'm confused. So, so I've cast... Skeletons? I've uh, cast Fireball, and then... The one that was already weakened was the one with the the dodgy shoulder, right? The yeah. joint. Well, I just don't know. What, I didn't know which one you were hitting. You hitting one. Or oh one. yeah, sorry, sorry, that one. You're hitting one. That's the one yes. where Reagan is. Okay. So yeah, that one. Hit. Uh, go ahead and roll damage as you knock off all of his right arm. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Until uh, you roll one. Eleven. You hit for eleven damage. So you knock off all of its arms, and then you see the flame kind of crackling, embering on the rest of its body as it begins to spread and turn the skeleton into ash as you kill it. I killed another thing! You killed another thing! You killed Steel Dragon. I'm oh, getting damn. so many temp-free hit points. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. What, what color they is the flame? They do not stack. Just remember that. Temp hit points do not stack. They do. Nope, oh, they replaced the well, last value. 
Do they? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. But if that's they, fine. If they cool. stack, oh my goodness, would that be broken? I mean, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then can I use my movement to come back around the corner, please? Yep, you can come right back around the corner. <laughs> Marvelous. I'd like to ask what color is the flame? Orange. I do it. Unless you flame, want to be different. Flame colored. The color I, of uh, flame. Like a, oh, give it a, give it a, a pinky hue, a pinky. like a coppery, coppery pink hue. Coppery pink hue of the flame. Which is basically orange. <laughs> <laughs> what are they made of? <laughs> Brilliant, Wait, I love no. it. Hold on. Hmm. All right. So next up is Skeleton Two. He's still alive. He's gonna try to use his action, and I just messed that up. He's gonna try to use his action to break out of uh, that sign, but he failed. He is still restrained. By it. Yay! He tries to move, but he can't quite get his all his arms through the vines that are entangling him with his ankles. Use, use All right. Next up, Phil. You're up. Yes. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. Underrated, but mm. really good. So, uh, I would just like, uh, start off by shouting out for Hammerborn! <laughs> okay. What are you and, casting? And, uh, yeah. I proceed to cast Firebolt at the skeleton. Go ahead and roll your attack. Alright, so D D20 is a hit, right? D20 plus your spellcasting modifier. Plus your spell, sorry, plus your spell attack. Um, Which is seven. My spell attack is seven, yeah. Um, seven. Sorry, 26. 26, you rolled 19, nice. Yeah, you hit it. I'll go ahead and roll damage. As you kind of cast your fireball through your wand, phew, it hits him right in the ribcage. Yowzers. The two, two D10. Your D10, yes, sir. I got total 11. Oh, 11 damage. Describe your killing blow. My killing blow? Well, Damn. basically, my firebolt goes in through the eye sockets and then just drizzles down through the skeleton. All right, kind of that happened. Ghost Rider look. Gives him the brief kind of intimidating ghost where I look as he just crumbles into a pile of bones. Thus ends the combat once more. Sick. Now you are free to look around the room as you please. Let's go to the piece of paper. Alright, you go I to go the piece to of paper. paper. He is in I fact take the paper. made of paper. You can determine that much. And it's written in dwarvish. Oh! I can read dwarvish. I can read Dwarvish too. Well, what does it say? Let me read it out. Alright, you've written in Dwarvish. If I catch you guys trying to drink the Ductus poison one more time, I won't be raising you again. I don't care how fun you think it is that you can't be poisoned. It's a waste of resource. And you kind of look around a little bit more, and on the floor behind the table, you find a small vial of poison that's empty. <laughs> we literally did this for a, 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 a gag note. <laughs> I love it. Die for a joke. <laughs> I love it. That's great. I, so I knew fun. it wasn't important because this is the first room. It's like one of the first rooms you go to. Yeah. Does it just that poison bottle that's behind the thing look anything like the ones? Sorry. No. Does that poison bottle look anything like the ones you picked up, Yato? So it looks like uh, just one of the regular vials that you found, not the special one. It looks like uh, the vials I picked off of the dead plague doctor. Does it does it say what it does? I'd like to do a. Would it be perception or survival to see what it does? Poison. So if you want to find out what the poison is, that's going to be an herbalism check uh, using the herbalism tools, if you have those, or just using the wisdom modifier if you're not proficient in the tools. So just a wisdom check. Wisdom. I rolled wisdom. Alright, what'd you get? 
I got a final score of 19. 19 plus your wisdom? All right. With a 19, you kind of can put a little bit on your pinky and taste it and kind of feel it. Uh, as you do that, you feel your body kind of rack and a little bit of pain and disgust. At this, uh, the, the, at least the purple poison is incredibly potent. And then you taste the um, the other one. And that one, you kind of... doesn't really have, like, any poison effect, but you feel kind of a little bit sedated after that. So it kind of wears off after a quick second. So Justin is going to look at you like you're a complete and utter moron. One is a uh, sleeping... Uh, one is a um, poison that will put you to sleep. Another Actually, you one know is. You're a rogue. Oh. You would be familiar with what these are called. You would know that this one, um, with the effect and the color, it kind of comes to you as an epiphany, is called Oil of Tagger. Oil of Tag. Tagger? Oh, that's good Tiger. stuff, yeah. that is. <laughs> uh, yep, I will put that's the good stuff. Uh, this one is an Oil of Tagger. And the other one is. Can I recall? Can I do? The other one, yeah. This one, this one, how you you think you know, but this one's gonna require a history check. Cause this one's more rare. <sighs> Can I do it? Never history took check a history him? class in my life, but let's no, go. You <laughs> Damn. I rolled a thirteen plus. What's my? History. Intelligence. Yeah, intelligence. Wow. Um, Hold on. That's the wrong one. History. Intelligence. Uh, no, isn't it wisdom? No, history is intelligence. Intelligent. Oh, okay. It's one. I got 14 final thing. 14. So you can't quite recall. You just. There's this one word that you keep remembering, but you don't know what the rest of it is. It's worm. Just the word war worm. That's all you can get. That's for, that's for the purple one. Is it possible can... to check? Also, same. Yes, you can. Um, I will allow you I have to do it if you have proficiency in either herbalism or survival. I'll allow you to make another check. I give you the vial. Uh... Survival? So, how many times can you cause cantrips? I have uh, as many times as you like. As many times as you want. Ooh. I have uh, history proficiency. If I can try and think of just poisons that I can recall. Yeah, I'll let you do that. Considering he kind of did identify a little bit, you can kind yeah, of follow cool. memory through reading about things. Yeah, Word. cool. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. All right, and Ada, what'd you get? That's like a lot of dice. A lot of dice all over the floor. <laughs> what, what did you say? 13. 13. Right. Unfortunately, you can't quite figure it out. But with your 16, that was the DC, was 16. You do recall mm. that it was, this appears to be kind of after hearing the describing, hearing the description of it, and the, how potent it is, and the word worm. Recall it as purple worm poison. Very rare, very powerful poison. Ooh. Oh, you uh, you should probably be careful with that. Wrap it up. It, it could possibly be purple worm poison. It's a very, purple very, poison. very potent and disgusting. J don't, just don't let it break. I think it might also be corrosive, but I could be wrong. Oh no! One way to find out. He just, he just. Ate a little bit, so I mean, I, I feel like. <laughs> but it's like, like the oh. <laughs> just why she looked at a Yano like he was a moron, because he would just eat random things that they find. <laughs> I taste tested Mism. the poison. <laughs> oh, is that how that works? Excuse me, let me just taste test this incredibly dangerous poison. Potent poison. <laughs> You like put a drop in your tongue, like, that's poison? Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, y'all. <laughs> oh no. Good night, y'all. I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, that is all you find in this, this room. This vial is empty, right? Yeah, the purple the vial is empty. It's an empty glass vial. 
Uh, Where is he? There he is. I throw it up at, I throw it up and um, I aim it in a way that it lands on the skeletons. You throw it up over your shoulder and land on the skeletons. If you walk away, like you just did something really cool. Did it break? It should have broken. <laughs> it did not. It's very small. It just tink tinked over their heads. Oh. <laughs> tink tink tink. Boneheads. As it makes a sound. All right, guys. Oh. All right. But you leave the room, going back into that hallway. You have the map set before you. So... Um. Sorry, sorry. Before we leave the room, can I pick up a couple of the bones, please? Absolutely. You now have several bones in your inventory. From various Thank you very much. And humans, or people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Add, add item exactly. bone to your inventory. <laughs> I have a dog. They like chewing on stuff. Good point. What? Oh, right. <laughs> it's I a bit dark, isn't it? <laughs> but you know, but you're not wrong. <laughs> I thought you said chewing gum. <laughs> Alright guys, so by the looks of this map, we potentially have, uh, we should go down the right route, because that looks like it will lead to the top of the tower, but there's also something down the left route with like a couple of Spots marked out. Which door did we just go come out of? Which room? We came out of the one with the bow. So we make a right into okay. the, the hallway and then another right towards the wizard hat. To, towards the wizard uh, stuff. And I don't think the wizard hat will give us any. Well, uh, we can peek into the room and assess the situation. <laughs> All right, like there's. Who keeps there opening are... my door? <laughs> there are two stealthy people in the party. Why don't we send them in both different directions? Have a look. Oh, she split come herself. back and report. Never split the group. You're stealthy. You just, just be very quiet. And I'm if there's selfie. problems, we shall... No, but we have a cat and a rogue. True. Yeah, right. I could, I, I could also go down one of the one of the paths if you'd like. I'm with sure we're the... on my own, thanks, though. Uh, oh, okay. I can handle my own situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, I shall sit here and be ready for when you get back then, my... Hi. My lovelies. So, who is going which direction? He can see an SC too. I'll go towards the wizard's cap if that's cool. Sounds good. Right, who I'll else is going go with you? to the left. Then. Uh, yeah, I was going to the left. And I'm going to the right. All right. Harry and Apollo, where are you going? Uh. Are we just, go are we just gonna. Right. I, I thought. I no, no, we should. Scouting. We should stay together. We're just. We're just checking yeah, what's just, around. I'll just, I'll just stay here. Just and kill I'll... me and Yato off. That's fine. <laughs> You're going to be fine. You'll be I'll, fine. I'll just, You'll be I'll just fine. bring in. I'll just bring in Rianu Keeves into here. He's dead. What are you splitting up? Dead, yeah. He is very dead. Killed by lightning. lightning due to puppy. <laughs> <laughs> in the case, I'm traveling the animals. All right, so so Ada is going to the right with with who? Oh. On her own. So you're going by yourself. No. Yeah. Gather was going so, to the left. So so. I don't know. By myself. By yourself. Everyone else is staying there. Yeah. I'm gonna rest. All right. You're gonna sit for a few minutes. Ayla, you're going there. All right, we're gonna do Ayla first. Uh, you walk down the corridor. Uh, you, or we'll head you in first. We're gonna do uh, Ayla's perspective. So, you walk down this corridor. Uh, you kind of see with your dark vision there. It kind of turns to the right. You see two doors: one to the left, one to the right. You feel the air is noticeably musty and damp coming from the damp. 
I turn I turn my face away from the stench. Alright, appears to be coming from the door on the left. Um, and you okay. also do notice there's candlelight or firelight coming from the door to the south. Or the door like the the wizard has. Uh, I kind of want to check out who, who or what's going on with the wizard hat, with the, the, the light. All right. You go to the door. It's like all the other doors here. Nothing too ordinary, but you see the light kind of peering through. In the crack, then. Crack. Don't I have decent, I have decent perception? Can I, do I, I don't know what I can do with that. Do I just, you can, like, uh, sense like you can make a perception going on? check? Just kind of see if you can hear what anything's going on there. You're welcome to roll a perception check for that. Alright, I'd like to do that. Do it. Oh god, no, it's seven. I rolled a one and it's plus six. Oh no. No, so you hear nothing. It's completely silent in there. Oh. Oh no. <clears throat> Probably a good thing. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna open the door. But you open the door. Because I'm really stealthy. Oh, when nobody can sense me. You see a kind of like a finely dressed room with several bookshelves, a harp, kind of lit with a fire in there, a desk and a large back chair. Like think like a Victorian style with like the, the burgundy leather kind of like, you know, put in there. As well as a Fancy. small bed. However, you do not see anybody. Uh, I carefully creep towards the books because, you know, Interests and all. Knowledge. Alright, so you, as you enter Knowledge. the room, leaving the door, the door closes itself behind you. You hear the la clicking of a latch as it locks. Mm. Uh. I'm second guessing all of my decisions up to this point. <laughs> <laughs> so after a few seconds of looking around, you hear what sounds like a, a, a sort of kind of laughing coming from the chair. Oh no. Oh no. I turn my attention towards oh, the no. chair. Um and I get my my you know, like my claws come out. Cause you know, I, I got claws. Khajiit has wares. <laughs> so what you see <laughs> is you hear the sound of bones getting put together to um, almost like a little like a xylophone but more bony less metal. A bone xylophone. Oh no. So, as, as you see, this, phone. this um, kind of figure <laughs> begins to rise from it, with skeletal That's hands and skeleton face, clad in a red robe, with a kind of golden trim along the, along the edge of it, and uh, see. He stands up and turns. So, you have entered into my room now. I, can I, can I, like, draw my shield and, like, hide behind it just a little and say... A absolutely. Wait, we're what are you doing here? What's what's with all the skeletons? What am I doing here? What are you doing here? You come into my room and you ask me what I'm doing here? How? <laughs> the business of these people. Do they not teach the youth these days? Or are they just let them out to do nothing? I mean, for real. <laughs> Definitely just looking for the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Like someone knocks on your door, opens the door. What do you want? Wait, what? You knocked on my door. <laughs> hey, you mean this isn't the bathroom? Um. He looks around. What do you mean? Is this not the bathroom? Does this look like the bathroom to you? Do you see these books and think it's toilet paper? This chair, does it look like a toilet to you? No, and that bed, what is that? A bathtub? No, it's a bed. It's the room we What do you want? This skeleton got insanely New york -ish. No, that's my accent right there. <laughs> right from Boston. I'm from Boston. <laughs> I'm walking here. I'm walking here. <laughs> what are you doing in my room? And why are you here? I'm sitting here. Uh, I'm I've got a lovely here. read. You walk in my room. You ask me what I'm doing here, like I'm some big burden, or I'm some surprise, like I don't belong in my own place. And like, whoa, well, fine, miss, I'll, fine, maybe I'll leave and let you have my room, huh? Is that what you want? <laughs> yes. I got lost and I saw, I saw a light, so I wanted to check it out. What do you mean you got lost? You will just wander into Dialog's Tower. People don't come here without purpose. 
different purposes. Uh, I always seek, I'm always seeking new knowledge, you know, seeking knowledge, seeking new adventures. So is that why you're here? Knowledge. You're here to seek some knowledge? Is that what you want? You sure. want some book knowledge? Well, you have to go knowledge. take that up with the witch on the fourth floor. On the, oh. on the fourth floor? Don't do worry, I'm sure you'll be quite, I'm quite acquainted with her. She has a thing for books, and she's very greedy. Not like this right. guy, eh? The keeper of this floor, eh? Arrogant guy. Ugh. Not my style, but here I am. I always figure, you know, you're dead. Put him with the rest of the dead guys. Why not? <laughs> so, what is your name? I'm Ada. Well, finally, some manners. Nice to meet you, Ada. My name is Ralph. Ralph, Ralph? Skeleton. <laughs> well, it's lovely to meet you, Ralph. <laughs> Loving every second of this. So he kind of turns the chair around and sits in. So, what can I do you for? I I couldn't help but see the books, and I was curious what your specialty is. Oh, my specialty. Oh, I just fireball anyone who comes in my room and answers the questions wrong. Oh. 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 <laughs> what is the answer? <laughs> Question wrong. <clears throat> I think it turned quick. That's true, dude. That escalated really quickly. Tell, that's not really my style. But I'm definitely a little taken aback by that fireball. Um, What'd you right? expect? You're an evil tower built, run by a mad lich who has the most powerful magic in the world or something like that, filled with horrors and, and multiple flaws. You think it'll be all pancakes and rainbows? Oh, it's evil. I didn't know that. Did the oh, dark oh. ominous <laughs> lighting around it, the lava <laughs> flows, thinking... the dark tower not give that away? <laughs> Did you no. think it was a good Next. tower? Did it look like a I good tower? Then finish when you paint job. Out of con uh, out of character, how old is this person? You have no idea. Like, <laughs> he's he well, he, he a skeleton. skeleton. How is it talking if it's a skeleton? Yeah. Magic. <laughs> cool. Ralph, cool, cool, cool. what happened to you now that you're a skeleton? What were you before you were a skeleton? Well, I was a simple man. You see, I used to be a cabbie. I used to tra transport people down <laughs> water deep. You know, I died one day, got brought back, you know, taught some dark magic here and there. Now I do the things and I get paid a copper a week. No, sorry, a gold a week just by doing my thing here. Just fireballing people who ask your answers. Either ask stupid questions or answer my questions incorrect. Who brought you back? Oh, oh, that's the guy's name. Come Death Knight, uh, a long time ago, right after uh, the t the attempt and rise of Tiamat. I'm sure you heard about that several years back. Tiamat tried to rise up with the Cult of the Dragon, but you know, some adventurers slayed that, and it was fine. But yeah, but there's some Death Knight there named Steve. I was like, what name? Starts to like Steve. Why? <laughs> I don't know. What was the guy's name? <laughs> but anyway, you know, but some of the adventurers recruited him. Well, I don't know if they recruited him or not, but he ended up helping in the battle for, you know, the well, at the Well of Dragons, the massive armies. Well, long story short, the adventurers were very stupid. Or, well, maybe they weren't stupid. They were not political, and they couldn't get enough armies. So essentially, this, this Death Knight goes with a hundred other mercenaries they hired to fight these 10,000 or over 100,000. Oh, they exaggerate these stories. And fights all these dragons and such. Well, all those humans die. And I think the adventurers I... died too eventually. But Steve. Yeah, but that guy Steve. Oh boy, they made a mistake because he he raised that whole army. He now has a massive keep up north with over ten thousand undead. What what is Steve? What is Steve going like? What is his cause? Oh, he's just chilling. <laughs> 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 this is the most Zoomer character ever. The best character. Can, can we recruit him? I like Ralph. <laughs> oh, I no. also like Ralph. <laughs> no, can we have Ralph? Seconded. You can certainly Why try didn't we to follow? Him. Ralph, would you like to come on an adventure with my comrades and I? Why would I come on an adventure with you? I got the best adventure right here. He takes a book. Look at this. This novel is great. You know, it's about the tale of the yawning portals and how the adventurers go in there and all the crazy things that happen there. It's amazing. He holds up literally the uh, tales from the yawning portals, the indie adventure book. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Okay. Just See, I, adventure is right here. I got <laughs> books. I got novels. I got reading. I got fireball. <laughs> you, you just send all Yum, fireball. Pardon, I couldn't uh, hear it. I, I heard like some kid trying to say fireball. Did you, <laughs> do you just spend all of your days here? You don't you don't leave this room? I read, yeah. Well, I wander. I'll go to the halls. I'll talk to my buddy. Uh, you know, the buddy of the overlord of the floor. I'll have conversations over, over tea and such. Arrogant fella, but you know, we talk. You know, again, talk about himself. Hey, entertainment for hours. Who's, who's the overlord you're speaking of? Oh, don't worry. You'll meet him soon enough. Now we're going to which, 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 oh god. Well, which, which way to this overlord? Is he as animated as you are? Well, it depends what you divine enemy. <laughs> Is he the undead? Well, he's definitely reanimated in that case, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh... <clears throat> No, I mean you're very knowledgeable, Ralph, and and been really, you know. It's just like uh, a cross between his hands on one knee. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, can can I leave un unfireballed? Oh well, yes. Oh. But you can't go through the door. Uh. Oh. <laughs> I see. If you come in here, I see that I'm mm -hmm. a book guy. You know. I was told, you know, if kill anyone you see, right? But now, I didn't think that was fun. But what I did is I developed a riddle. If they can guess the riddle, they can leave. If they don't, I can fireball. Oh, God, I'm not good with riddles. Oh, well, that's gosh. unfortunate. You're in trouble. I do, I, I, there, well, that's the first option. There was a second option. What's, what's that one? What's fireball. that option? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love his character. Um, Just one well, singular you get the real fireball. Or you, get the fireball. or you can pick both and you get the real and the fireball. My personal <laughs> favorite. <laughs> we all stayed behind, didn't we? Yes. Every mm -hmm. single one yes. of you. I'm sorry! <laughs> can I, like, point out... So oh, we, that, I'll let that, you think about that. We're gonna go over to Art's character, who also went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. No, while you're all you're sitting there, oh, <laughs> people no. are doing adventures. Mm. Oh, Art, so you walk, oh, you're no. going down the left hallway, correct? I fucking love Ralph. <laughs> all right. I really want Ralph to be our friend. Yeah. But but my charisma is garbage. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, Make like an ultimatum. If we come back alive, Ralph has to join us. <laughs> there you we go. could go visit Steve and take him to the <laughs> yawning portal for real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to know what's through the portal? <laughs> we'll take you there. Come on. <laughs> oh, dear. Love it. Uh... All right. So, yeah, how are you walking through down this corridor? Uh, I'm not, like, running down and I'm not making as much noise, but I'm not walking, like, full stealth. All right, so you're just casually kind of walking down it? It's a casual, a uh, very, like, casual, quiet walk. I know that I'm walking. Okay. Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh. Ooh. I should have said, uh, perceive any traps. You should have, but unfortunately you didn't. <laughs> it was on my mind as well. I got a 15 dexterity plus... Uh, four. Five, five, nine, so as you're walking down this, you I hear mean... the click of a pressure plate as you were not kind of paying attention. Or you were thinking about, hey, I should check for traps. As that thought occurred to you, you step on a pressure plate. As the floor kind of opens up in a small area, dropping down into a large spike pit. But however, you are able to kind of save yourself and grab onto the ledge, not falling in into it. And you can you can kind of nice. clamber your way back up. Uh, the pit is now still there. However, you can jump. It's not it's not very it's not very big. I sigh in disbelief. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> All right. The wall, you feel like the I walls roll. are judging you just for that lack of a terrible show of perception. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, I would like to actively look for a trap this time. All right, go ahead and make a perception check. 17. All right, so you keep cool. you go down the rest of this corridor. You do not see any more traps. So you get to the end, you see one door on your right, one door on your left. The door on the right appears to have this kind of sigil on it. And then you kind of push against it a little bit, it appears to be locked. And the door on the left up here is unlocked. I would like to crack the door on the left. You crack the door on the left. Well, you see this large room. I have several small mirrors on the wall and one large stand floor mirror standing right in the middle. Hmm. That could be a point of interest, but I'm not going to go in there. Very well. Uh, I'd like to see if there's a lock on the room on the right. All right. On the room on the right. Sorry, that what I described was the room on the right. It's, uh, it's oh, the, the locked one. Oh, sorry. Perspective. Eh. Perspective. You exactly. pr your perspective. The one I'm aware. Of. So the sigil West, appears to be yes. carved in these arcane ruins. It looks like you'll either need some type of magical spell or object to open it. Is there any kind of a gap I can look through? Uh, not really, but you can put your ear to it and listen. I'd like to listen. All right. So make a perception check. Here we go. Perception check. 17. Nice. So as you listen carefully, you hone in your senses for a brief moment, you hear what sounds like an ethereal humming. And a, like a sharpening of a blade. But it's not. it doesn't sound quite like normal. It sounds kind of ghastly and ethereal. Almost like it's not entirely there. Hmm. Could I predict what kind of creature is there? Not not based on that alone, but you definitely know it's some type of ethereal ghastly creature. Describe oh, what is ethereal? Ethereal. Ghost. Not quite on the okay. same plane. I think like a ghost maybe? Or something kind of like a ghost? Maybe not necessarily. Zoink Scoob, we have a mystery to solve. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did I perceive any uh, threats in the room on the east of the map? On the east? Uh, you did not. It just appeared to be an empty room with several mirrors on the wall and one large floor mirror. I would like to open the door, you but not door. walk in. Walk in. It's still rather. It's rather musty. I said musty. not walking. Oh, all right. You smell the room. It's rather musty. Uh, can I do a survival check to see what if there's any poisons in the air? Absolutely. Go for it. I'll have you do a. Yeah, you can do a survival check. That's fine. Fifteen total. Uh, you do not smell any poisons in the air. It looks, this room appears to be safe. Just all the mirrors. However, you look at the, the large mirror, it appears to be not showing the same reflection of the room you're in. If you look at it, you, still, you, do not, you do not see yourself. You see something else entirely. Oh. In. What do I see in the large mirror? So you stare through your mirror, and what, and what you see on the other side is a vast mountain of gold covered in, in rare gems and rubies, as far as the eye can see. Oh. It looks very real, as if you could stick your hand through it and take it. The Philosopher's Stone. Not Lord of the Rings. I am, I am a rogue. I am a rogue. That was a Harry Potter rogue. reference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, 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 oh, I've seen just the first Harry. Harry Potter. That's it. Uh, I walk. I Which was the Philosopher's Stone, by the way? Step on the mirror. You what? On the floor mirror. <laughs> I very carefully walk into the room. Okay. Uh, the floor mirror is not on the floor. It's like it's like one of those large body mirrors, but it's like on the floor, like still like looking at you. Oh, okay. Uh, I look around. Is it just mirrors? It's just mirrors. Just mirror. 
Just Mira. Mira. Just Mira. 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 Uh, I would like to look behind the mirror that is showing a lot of gold. All right. So the rest of the mirrors on the wall are like smaller mirrors, like vanity mirrors. You know, nothing, yeah. nothing bigger than a foot. And they're just kind of scattered around. Those appear to be normal. But the, the big one, mm -hmm. it appears to be like, it looks like a normal mirror. You kind of look around, you look through it, and you don't see anything behind you. You can put your arm back behind it, and it does not go in. Uh... I will, uh, hmm. It's dangerous to go alone. I have, um, I have a book in my inventory. I would like to tear out a page at the back of the book and, uh, make into a paper airplane and throw it in. You will. No, you needlessly destroy a book and fold it into a paper airplane and throw it. No, just tear out, tear out a page out of my, out of the back of my notebook. Okay, yeah, so you make a paper airplane and you throw it at the mirror. It goes and flies into it and click, falls as if it stopped for the paper airplane. Stick your finger through it. It's just a finger. <laughs> it's just a finger. Stick a dagger through it. But it's Stick your old body through it. Yeah. Next, the next thing. Go through okay. The Why is the dagger gonna I, go I pick up the paper airplane, unfold it, and put it back in. Into my notebook. You unorigami the paper airplane and put it back in your notebook. Gotta recycle the paper. Gotta save the planet. You know. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Use your pinky. You don't I need would your like pinky. to um, grab. You can still get pregnant if it's just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to oh, grab no. my dagger and I'd like to slowly put it <laughs> through the. <laughs> You're gonna take the dagger and you're still gonna put it through? Yeah. The dagger seems to go through. What? As you were holding hmm. it. Yeah, I was about to say, maybe it's because I'm holding it. Or because the dagger is not organic. Paper airplanes came from a tree which was organic at one point. Maybe. I have a crowbar in my, in my inventory. It's organic. Wait, no, hold on. The dagger's gone. I have hemp and rope. It would have come from a hemp and plant, right? Mm -hmm. So it's organic. Yeah, it would have, yeah. So I'd like to attempt to touch the end of the rope to the mirror. Does it go through? It does. So, myth busted. It's whatever I'm touching. Mm -hmm. So... I am a smart, uh, a smart rogue. I, uh, perceive, hmm, maybe it's trying to get me to go into the mirror. Mm. But uh, other ordinary objects, it's just a normal mirror. It's dangerous to go alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just think of what's going on with me and Ralph. Yeah, remember, it is just a scouting mission. You were literally supposed to check the hallways. Just FYI. Just put it out there. The books. I Don't can't hear die. you. I'm in the room with mirrors. <laughs> he is not with you, yes. I know. Uh, <laughs> we're just supposed to look down the hallway. <laughs> we're going to go this time. Uh, yeah. Probably shouldn't be. <laughs> oh yay! Rescue mission. <laughs> I wish. Choose. I wish to head back. All right, you wish to head back. What do you do? I <laughs> open the door and leave. <laughs> you open the door and walk back the way you came, rejoining the group. So by the time you get back, um, our, uh, Yato rejoins you. You know, Ada is still not back yet. I'm gonna go check then. Right. Um, we should probably all go and check. Should we all yeah. go check, yeah. Uh, I will. I would like to take the lead since I'm the next stealthy one. I kind of. There's already somebody in the room, so. Well, we don't have the traps. I would like to use my passive wisdom you, to check for you any traps. You just always use your passive wisdom. <laughs> 
But yeah, if you want to mm. be actively checking for traps, let me know. That'll help you roll perception check if you come across hey. one or come across another time where there may be a trap. Hey, is there a trap next? No, because they already, already walked through this area. <laughs> there's somebody already there, so... I mean, I was stealthy, though. Right. Well, stealthy, Let's though. go. All right, but you walk and see the same door. Or the see this I'll live described prior. There's a light under it. Mm -hmm. Do we hear any? I do we in. hear anything? I would like to uh, put my... Talking. I would like to put my ear against the door that I hear talking from to oh, We'll perceive. continue where we left off in the conversation. So, kid, or Ada, 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 what's your name? Well, what do you want? Do you want plan A or plan B? I mean, I don't want fireballs, so I guess plan A is uh, the best choice I've got. Let's go with this riddle. Well, suit yourself. I'm quite a fan of them, I said. Fireballs are quite good. Well... <laughs> Brace yourself. This one's a hard one. Alright. You kind of... Oh, you're, you would think you were smiley and glee and excitement. If if you... Well, if you had, you know, facial muscles or anything, but he's just a skeleton. So, he's not. <laughs> but, you know what I mean this? I have towns without people, forests without trees, and rivers without water. What am I? I already know uh, the answer. So you're not there. Well, you're there, I but know. you can't. Yeah. Well, what was the riddle again? Say, say the riddle again, Ralph. I have towns without people, forests without trees, and rivers without water. I would like to repeat the riddle to um, the other people behind the door. All right, he repeats it to you. Map. Hmm. Who's saying it? The answer is map. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, so you guys, you guys are uh, doing your own. Uh, I, I yeah. lightly knock. They're listening in there at the door, but they can't answer for you. Right. I they, lightly they, they knock on the door. So you, you have towns without trees. What was that? Forests without rivers. Trees. Oh, without trees. Forest towns without, towns without people. Towns without, towns without forest, people. Forests without trees and rivers without water. Rivers without water. Yeah. Map is, is the answer. I would like to, to knock on the no, door as well. Can I knock on the door? You knock on the door. Go away, I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what's your answer, kid? I knock on the door and say, Pizza delivery. You want Who's a fireball, dead? kid? <laughs> is it yeah. Is it cheating if I say map? Oh, it's up to you. I'm just, I'm, uh, map. Well, map is the, the correct door. answer. So I guess you get to live another minute. Just one minute? Just one, yeah. Until the next so thing kills. Alright, well, And you can leave. leave, the door's open. Well, it was, it was great meeting you, Ralph. I, I really wish you'd reconsider and come hang out with us, because uh, you're my kind of dead people, so. And I walked <laughs> towards the door. Hey! I'm very much alive. My body's just dead. My personality's flourishing. I can, I can definitely see that. Oh, well, yeah. Your personality's brilliant, Ralph. Who so are I, you? I turn towards the, the door and, and <laughs> but, but I keep, I keep an ear on Ralph because. So, so you open the door him. and you stumble into the your entire part of your ears to the door trying to listen. <laughs> <laughs> what do we just like fall into the room? <laughs> Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Who's that lovely fella? No, that's Ralph. Keep going, keep going. Who are these? Your cronies? Uh, yeah, kind of. These are my comrades. Uh, I think you'd fit in pretty well, Ralph. Does anybody want to charm him into being part of our party? Because I can't. You know I I'm right know. here. I can hear you say that. <laughs> I may be dead, but I'm not blind, deaf, or stupid. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So I got I got this far. I did not get to the other room, so I apologize, guys. I guess we're going up yes, on my on my endeavor to the to the left. Oh, hey, kid! I almost forgot. You forgot your fireball. And he throws something at you. 
right, I, I, can I duck? Yes. Uh, I, then I, I duck and, uh, sorry, whoever is in front of me. So whoever's in front of you. I mean. Who wants to be in front of her? I, I, I mean. Remember. Yeah, but, but you, you're all on the floor right now. I mean, it's true. Did, Which means it's going to hit me because I'm on the back of the dog. <laughs> All right. No, well, I, I apologize, then. Um, oh, Jocelyn, no. what you see is this, maybe like this size pellet of a glow of glowing energy or something come at you and hit you boonk, square in the forehead as it falls down onto your lap. Oh, so it's a baby fireball. You can you okay. kind of look at it, you pick it up, you smell the scent of cinnamon coming from it. Oh. Oh my god, it's an actual fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pick it up and be like, oh! Oh, lovely little, little warm my bones. Thank you very much. And I'll put it in my mouth. <laughs> Bethany, I need you to make your constitution saving throw. Are you no! oh. Oh no! <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. This is good. This is fine. We're gonna use. We're gonna use the good, the good special die. The weighted dice. It's not weighted. It's just a normal. It's all twenties. It's, it's, it's all. all it's all twenties. All twenties, as you can see. Oh god! That one. I have the lucky feet, though. You are welcome to use it. Because <laughs> I rolled a one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm also, I'm also going to put this die in jail. <laughs> I jail <it> <laughs> And use a different one. The lucky one. feet is a savior. <laughs> use a different one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. can we see that what map there? Say? Oh! 18! Alright, you do save, you only take half damage. Fun. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, so you, you, which was 11, so you take half of that. You only take five points of fire damage as you attempt to ingest this tiny fireball. Andy. Dang, <laughs> should've gave it to me. Mm. Oh, this is oh, it's a bit... <coughs> Just like coughing up smoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that definitely clears the lungs. <laughs> Can I have a couple more of those? No, you know I got a big one just for you. Takes his hand and actual fireballs in there. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I don't think so. I. So that's why the ball just slams the door. <laughs> oh, that's right. There you go. I was gonna. I was just gonna just spell magic him. We could steal his bones and take him with us. But I mean, that's fine. <laughs> Shutting the door is also good. <laughs> steal his bones. Yeah. We, could just, we could literally just, just take him head. with us. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna steal Ralph. <laughs> oh no. I love that idea. That's yeah, my kids these you. days. All they want is money. Else? They don't know how to treat their elders with respect. Ugh. He else? literally just hit an old woman in the face with a candy. <laughs> no, he wasn't aiming for you. <laughs> That's very true. He may have been, yeah, aiming for me. He was aiming for you. Made it. Uh, That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ada might whisper in, or mumble under her breath that it's what you get for splitting up the group. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't. I didn't hear that. Could you, could you say it a little bit louder? Nothing. Yeah, she said no, nothing. No. Um. Yeah. We. We should. We should go up. We. Uh. I wasn't able to scout a ahead. So, my end was a dead end, for the west door in the map. I point out the door with a lock. Uh, there was some sort of rune, uh, cast with magic. Are we at least in the hallway at this point and yes, not in Ralph's are. face? You are, you are, <laughs> we are. are in the hallway. <laughs> okay. I, I, uh, point on the map and say, 
What do these eight arrows? This looks like this might be where we need to go. Um, well, if there's a rune, I could sure. definitely take a look at it. I did find doors? a. I did find a a mirror room, a room <laughs> filled with mirrors, and there's one full body mirror standing up in the middle of the room as you open the door. It didn't show the same reflection though. It showed like another. Uh, it showed like a pass through view to another area. Did uh, it have my... any extra runes on it? I don't remember any runes being on there. It just looked like a plain mirror just reflecting something else. I did a couple tests and. I threw a paper airplane at it. The paper airplane bounced off the mirror as if it's a normal mirror. But What's an airplane? Oh, sorry, it's being pedantic. <clears throat> I'll explain later. It appears there's some. Ooh, youngsters in your slang. Gems on the map. Yes, but those those three gems on the are like right above where we entered through the wall. Those appear to be locked by the rune door that I've encountered. Uh, I uh, have a question. Why are we not just going in this door here on the right, uh, considering sure. that it's the one that seems to lead to where we're actually trying to go to. Yes. I that guess is a good know. point. It, I'm it, surprised it, nobody's interested in this weird mirror. Oh, weird mirrors are overrated. I don't yeah. want to look at myself anymore. I'm old now. There's too Without many a weird book of, room things. of you know, room of books and look what that happened there. Very true. <laughs> Get yeah, the could be a portal to death. Yeah, the, the arrow room has shown us that there's useless papers around. Yeah. Can I please detect magic on the, the 30 feet radius of myself, including in the room with the uh Ralph. The, the torch on it oh. yep. definitely oh, magic you sense that there is magic coming from the other room enchantment magic. is the Sorry, door enchanted the door is not the room is. could the I, I can't quite reach the handle from here can someone just open that door i'll open it i'm not doing it <laughs> Apollo opens the door. The confidence of your party members is nice. All right. So you open the door. What you see in there? I would is a like to look room. for traps. A, for a normal room, save for the one thing, is up to your up to your weight, up to the halfling's head, is just magical darkness. However, for the warlock halfling, she sees it normal. And only I see the through un every only kind of dark. to the uh, to Jocelyn, the warlock with devil sight. There are two giant rats scurrying about in that dark. Are the giant it's rats the things dark. with the transmutation magic on them? They are not. It appears to be coming from several rooms carved into the bottom of the floor. Or on, on the bottom of the, like the baseboard. But they're stone. So, base stone? I can't see anything. What? Okay, so there are two okay, rats in here. Just, so just Is maybe... Uh, I've I've got something sharp. Um, is it that one of the runes is like close to the door? Yeah. So there are four runes like, in total. Like one, a... for, one for one for each corner. There's one to the left side of the door, one on the other side, one on the wall, and the other. Kind of in the middle, except for the one where the door is, because the door is in the middle. Okay. Can I please get off Hyacinth? Mm -hmm. Um, and go in sort of diagonally with something sharp so I can, sh wait, yeah, so I can like 
scratch through the rune and she's like gonna be Shine protecting me from the rats yeah. kind of thing so you go in and you can it's it's like right next to the door so you can't reach your arm around just scratch the ruin that's disabling oh, okay so you notice the darkness go, goes down a little bit um it's almost almost below the halfling's head stand, but still slightly above. so uh, so can i do the same for the other side uh yeah there's one on the wall you were at so it's like one for each wall the others are going to have to go into the room Okay, uh, yeah, Apollo, could you uh, could you just follow me real quick? Because he's still got a torch, sure. right? Yeah, I have a torch. Awesome. Uh, you might just want to aim the torch in the floor area. I'm just going to go and try and deal with this dark. All righty. All right, so Apollo, um, as you walk in, so, you see same. the torch light is just gone. The darkness stays the same. But for you, however, um, you you can see someone normally now. Torchlight can't help. It gives you a little bit of color. But for everyone else, you, it does not pierce the dark. There is just this abyss of black on the floor. Up to your waist. Could I have a, like, pull my head into the darkness to see if I can see inside it? You put your head in the darkness. You see. Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Mm -hmm. Boy. Is it, is I, it like I, one of those, oh, I, oh my god, I can't see when I close my eyes! <laughs> it is very dark in the darkness. Who would have thunk it? Thunk. thunk. Alright, so Apollo and Jocelyn, the rats are, uh, the rats are coming, in, coming at you as you are walking in. You see this happening, Jocelyn. Okay. Uh, Apollo, oh, can, I, can I try right. and... Uh, give Apollo instructions as to where to kick. Sure. Yeah. He's still going to make attacks with disadvantage because he can't quite see it, but you, you can kind of aim him so he can't hit. That can't hit. I'm not, we're not going to roll okay. this because these, these rats are pretty weak. It'll just be... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, shall I just... Just what, cut roll? dump the rats. That's it. Rats well, you can attack them normally. Uh, if you have Eldritch Blast as well, that you can target two creatures. Uh, I... That. Joe, I mean, I have, I have frostbite and I have a fireball. Warlock who so doesn't take Eldritch Blast. I didn't want Eldritch Blast because it's a trope. But it's so good. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Fair enough. What? Um, what? yeah, uh, can I? Yeah, well, I suppose I could just firebolt them. That's a really good oh, point. You could firebolt one, and then you could try to assist uh, Apollo in attacking the other. You can make the attack with you. Yes. So I... So, okay, cool. Um, well, I'll aim for the one that's furthest away. All right. Does that make, make sense? Spell attack. Yeah, furthest away. Yeah. Uh, it's 12. 12 that hits. I'm... Uh... <laughs> three damage. Hey, guess what? <laughs> you kill it. <laughs> Woo! Whoa! <laughs> They're meant to be annoying. Uh, All right, yeah. So you cast your fireball. Too. It kind of hits the tail end of it, literally, and well, it still dies because it's a rat. Not very, <laughs> not very. These might be bit, giant rats, but they're still rats at the end of the day. Not very, uh, powerful. All right, next up, Apollo. I think these rats are only for the singular joke that is, oh shit, a rat. Not quite. Well, the only reason you can see these rats is because your warlock has devil sense. Yeah. Uh, does, uh oh, Apollo an invisible aim at a general 45 degree angle at a 33 degree descent. Apollo just starts kicking. <laughs> <laughs> Make the attack with this attack. And then I just started blasting. I, anyway, I just started blasting. <laughs> Yes. You guys doing all right in there? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Give, give me one second. Just, just dealing with the pest problem. <laughs> ah, the pest. I've had problems with that before. I rolled a seventeen. Oh, oh you plague! Hit. You rolled a seventeen. Nice. You hit the rat. Ah, uh, roll damage. One. 
Wait, that's it? You said oh, arm strike. Do you, nice. you know, you get a plus. <laughs> yeah. You get six. a plus. Six, okay. I was like, how did you get a one? Do you have like a negative modifier or is you? <laughs> All right, just like, yeah, you kill her. You kick it. You're, you kick and flail Whoa. like a toddler attempting to swim for the first time in the darkness. <laughs> and you feel yourself hit something fleshy and kill the rat. That description, though. Well, that was a very good shot. Well done, dear. I'm going to tap him on his leg. <laughs> <laughs> and then go ahead and scratch out the rest of the dark. You scratch out the rest of the ruins and the darkness stays, allowing you to see normally in this room. There's nothing else of interest in the room besides two la uh, large rat corpses. You just killed two large what giant rat oh, corpses. Yes, yeah. the dead bodies of the rats. You just slay. uh, I would like to put the the rat bodies in this the side pockets that uh, Hyacinth has on me and her thing. So she's got some dinner for later. <laughs> you now carry two giant rat corpses about half the size of you. No. Oh no, no, it's okay, it's okay, Hyacinth's got them, it's fine. Yes, your Mastiff is, can hold, can hold them. Oh my, hopefully that won't smell later. Hey, but where, do you continue on? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah? I wanna, I wanna open the door to Ralph and be like, Hey, got any fireball scrolls in there? Yeah, this one just for you. I close the door again. <laughs> Slam the door. You no! see fire kind of envelop the, the, envelop the door a bit. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna grab just Harry and drag him along. <laughs> oh. you grab him by the ear like a disappointed parent. Come on. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Thought he is. Alright, so there's a room to your north. Would you like to go there? Might as well. All right, you make any... your way to the, the uh, Make my way downtown. Welcome. As I was say, is there any magic in the next room? There, there is not magic in here. It appears to be more mechanical. Traps. Oh. I check for traps. You check for traps. You do not find any traps. But what you see in this room is a room that has four <laughs> large hives filled with bees. And the door at the end has several small holes about one to two centimeters wide. With no discernible handle. <laughs> Ooh. If you would like, you can make a nature check to determine what type of bees they are. You do hear the buzzing quite, even though they're all in the hive, <laughs> as the hives are closed. They're like, um, like, a box shine, you can open them. Uh, they can I make that nature check? Right. Pardon? Can I make that nature check? Absolutely. Bees. Felt the bees. <laughs> Covered in bees. bees. Ah. 23. Woo! All nice. Right. With a 23, yeah, you you easily discern that you've seen these bees before in the, in the forest where you're from. Uh, these are killer bees. Oh, killer Great. bees. Mm. My favorite. <laughs> I love killer bees. It's a bees. good kind of bee. It's, you know. Still, are they still from outer space? Perfect, guys. Let's. Uh... True. Let's, true. I, I would be really cautious and maybe very calm around these guys. You know, just to, just to put that out there for you. Be really well, you know calm. what? You know what calms bees down, don't if smoke. <laughs> Are you gonna cast fireball? Oh no! no fireball. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I'm not gonna cast fireball. <laughs> Because yeah, no, are you holding a, a large, like, fireball or something, like, from, no, that hit a door. No, that was a sweet, that was, like, a fireball sweet. That's right. Yeah. Um, There's a tiny fireball also, also, inside of your mouth. How do you mean it's a sweet? It's a fireball sweet. It's you a, it's a. a... Oh, could you eat it? <laughs> I ate it. It was a sweet. Oh, you yeah, definitely good. feel like you're gonna have a Harper in later. Good for the what? the lungs. Open up the airways, breathing fire <laughs> and shit. Um, can I inspect the door, please? Yes, you can. Make an investigation check. Can you breathe fire now? 
<laughs> no, I'm gonna sneeze cold at someone at some point though. Where did my D20 go? Oh, I put it in jail. <laughs> oh, Where'd no. I Where did I go? Uh, 17. Let's see, so you investigate. Uh, the door doesn't have any discernible latches or way you can kind of grab onto it, but there are several holes, like tiny little holes, uh, one to two centimeters big. Enough for maybe a bee you fit through or something, or maybe a, your pinky finger. Uh, but you can't quite, feel, but you can't peer through it. There, you, it looks like there's maybe some type of mechanism. Um, hey, hey, uh, Yasha, what are your lockpicking skills with bees like? With bees? <laughs> with bees? <laughs> what do you mean with bees? <laughs> well, if you come here and have a look at this, this door, there's uh, a lot of very small bee-shaped holes in it. Just, just burn the door down. No, I, I would dinner. like to. Hey, Nat, do I see? Be careful. Ah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> what did you say? Do I see a visible like keyhole or something? There is no no. It's just holes. Okay, it's just literal okay. holes. I, I look. I look. <laughs> I look at Joe Salen. I. Jo what? How, how do I say your name? I, I'm Jocelyn. Like, Jocelyn. Yeah. I put my uh, tips of my thing, my middle finger and my thumb through like two gaps of the bees and I pull open the door. Does the door pull what? open? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Are you, you're fingering the door, but with your... <laughs> Way to make it weird, Bethany. <laughs> Sorry. That, that, one, that came out really wrong. <laughs> you put... I, I yeah, but me saying you putting your fingers will... in the door doesn't sound anything. All the regret. All the regret right now. I will <laughs> turn on the camera to, do, to show you, you how I mean. <laughs> oh, this is going to mess up the name, so... You're going to, like, I'll stick turn your finger in there? <laughs> Face reveal? Uh, no. Apparently. <laughs> get them. Nope. Oh, oh. He'll get there eventually. Give him some time. Oh, and he's gone. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just And he is just gone. <laughs> oh. Like, he said he's gonna put his, his pinky we, and his death. thumb, which, which is... <laughs> Wait, can I use all the self? Oh, oh like apparently a Discord broke. You cannot, you cannot change into different, cre different creatures entirely with all the self. You only alter yourself. But can I put, like... Uh, you maybe? can't turn into a bee no. at this at fifth level, though. You can't turn into anything that flies until sixth, I think. Yeah. Or seventh. Uh, I think it's eighth, actually. Oh, it's eighth? Yeah, eighth or ninth. Unless you're a moon druid. Can I get, like, bee and ten? Unless you're a moon druid. You can give yourself bee and ten, yes, with alter self. They will not be functional, <laughs> but you will have them. Can I, can I, can I, like, sound like a bee as well? You can sound like a bee without all of yourself. <laughs> there he is, he's back. Oh, Rocco's not dead. He lives. He lives. It is alive. All right, so turning on the camera messed with Discord. Standard. So I will attempt number two shortly. Oh boy. Okay. Ah, OBS. It's cool. All right. There we go. Aha! All, all I'm doing is just holding it like this, like putting the middle finger and the thumb in the like the B holes and pulling it open like this. Okay. Oh. So there, there are more okay. than two. There are several. Um, you can count them. There's about eight in total, and they're all kind of spread out throughout the door. Face reveal. How strong is this door? Head reveal. He is hewn from volcanic stone like the rest of them. Mm. Theoretically, so one can no, break with enough force to magic, uh, but it is a little bit. 
went to the gym a couple times. Can I, can I have a look? Basically, um, I just fucking I... opened the door. <laughs> so you attempt to put your fingers in there and pull, but unfortunately it does not give. As if your fingers can echo in deeper. Can I take the torch from... Uh, uh, Polo, can, could you put the torch by the hole for the yep. the, the hive? I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna waft some, oh, some yeah. uh, smoke Polo. in there. Oh. Uh, Polo, can um, pick the door down? Yeah, and it's pretty strong. Looks strong. I uh, think I could. Do the bees look like bees? Yeah. Or are they mechanical bees? They are normal or... killer bees. Normal killer bees. From outer space. <laughs> normal killer bees. <clears throat> I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at Ada. Ada, you you know more about these things than me. What do you, What do you think? Um. Fireball. I, I think we should. I go. <laughs> How can you create more smoke? Like, you make more can... fire without. We can. You can create water. I can create water. Yeah, but that's. I mean. Torch, water, steam. We unless we burn paper and books. We have a room full of books. That makes my stomach hurt. <laughs> <laughs> can I go uh... into Corel? I do not think Amelia that Paula our Brad friend Paul will appreciate no. us burning his books. We can... Can I try, please, using thaumaturgy to replicate the sound of the bees on the other side of the door? Yes, you Like, mean. at the keyhole, yes. Can I just try that and see if literally anything happens? You cast a large noise. You hear um, the buzzing, but the door does not give. And the bees don't do anything. I mean, the bees are <clears throat> a little more aggressive. They're still in their hive, but they hear, you hear the buzzing a little bit more as they respond to the buzzing. But when you stop the buzzing... I feel... I feel hey, like... Hey, bee! I see wanna if you just... can let me in. Please. Can I use plant growth to, like, draw the bees to us, but, like, through the door to unlock it or whatever? Open it for us? There does have to be know. plants around for plant growth to work. Oh. Uh, what about can my you, plants? The yeah, plants you carry in my a backpack? plant with you. Yeah, you can yeah, grow I have a plant in my backpack. Can I make it blossom so that the bees come at me? Yeah, if you're making like flower or druid craft, we'll actually do that for you. Yeah. And that's the case mm. you don't have to waste spell slot. Uh, is that something that sounds doable for, you know, like, yeah. like would that help to unlock the door? Uh, we won't know until we try. True. <laughs> I just know that I'm I'm going to be engulfed in bees, y'all, so. <laughs> bee armor! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's, to be it's... or not to be... I'm it's getting to, to the me. point where I just kind of want to chuck a fireball in the room, shut the door, and see what happens. If all the, all the bees are locked in the hive, they are not flying around. Oh. Yeah. So they can't even come out. They can't even get out of the hive. Nope. It would you need it would need to be open. Oh, I didn't realize they were locked. Yeah. They're not locked. Either. They're just closed. No. Oh. Open yeah, no. Grab and unlock one of the hives. Is there a lock I'm gonna go the stand over here. <laughs> There's no lock on the hive. I right, so you're going to open the okay. hive. One of them, one single hive. Just wow. one hive. That's still like hundreds of thousands of bees, possibly. Exactly. So <laughs> well, as you get close to the hive, you hear the buzzing, <laughs> grow intensifying. As you get there, you crack it open. As hundreds of bees are flying out and filling the room. I I don't oh, stand the bees. In, I don't stand in front of the bees. I stand with the hinge, and I open the door, rotating with the hinge away. And as soon as I open it, I back away. And but the back the door you came in from. Uh, towards that door, yeah. Okay, 
So you quickly oh. kind of go over there and close the door behind you. Are you leaving Jocelyn in there? Heck no! <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not leaving the room. I said I'm going towards the door. Okay, you're going oh, towards no. the door. Oh, no. So uh, everyone who is in the room is going to take some damage. Oh, yeah, man. no, I, I I requested to leave before that happened, so I mean... Uh, literally, as you crack it open, <laughs> bees just start flying out of this thing. So even if you, ru you yeah, run to the exit, you're still going to take a little bit. Uh, and everyone who was in the room when the bees were open, it takes two points of poison damage. Ah. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, poison. Uh, as, the, as you feel yourself get pelted with several bee stings. But you hear them kind of buzzing. <laughs> you stay in the room, or are you heading back to the other room? I'm gonna leave. I mean, we're trying to get out, like through the other door, right? We're trying to continue on. Apollo just pulled his cloak over his head and just ran. <laughs> Ada, you can you can talk to animals, right? Me? Uh, well, speak to the bees. I don't speak actually speak to animals. I can understand them, sort of. What did the bees say? Just the script of the bee movie. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> no wonder they're locked away. <laughs> yeah, I don't have I don't have talk to animals. Uh, that is not something that I currently. Um, All right. Bees aren't bees. intelligent enough to talk to anyway. Uh, is anyone still standing in the room? Because if you are, more bee stings are coming. No. Did everyone kind of dip, dip out of the room and start the bees as soon as you start getting stung bees? Mm -hmm. Can I can I put my backpack with my plant uh, against the wall and then step out so yep. they can go towards that? Absolutely. Why is this so difficult? So, after you go and kind of close the door and kind of catch your breath after feeling itchy and stinging from all those stings, uh, you hear the distinct click sound coming from the other side of the room. Wonderful. Oh so, no. Is the other door open or other door unlocked? Potentially. We have to open the door and look. Uh, I, I look in. I'm not going to be quick to, to get rid Who of my most hit points. Aranda, there is a solution that Phil will be very proud of um, getting through there without getting stung. Pardon? What? There is a very Phil solution that I can think of off the top of my head to not get stung. Fireball? That would be the one. I cast Fireball. Uh, are you this going to cast Fireball? This is a solid solution. I cast Fireball. All right, so make sure you keep track of your spell slots. So you cast Fireball, yep. throw it in there, as the room just explodes in flame, as all the bees that were open, not in their hive, get incinerated instantly. Pile the bash. Ah, 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 ah. Don't be a nut to be. Fireball is a very Not to be today. What the hell, Harry? My My bad. Cool. <clears throat> But I suppose we're gonna go back in, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna push the door, have a look, um, and and then everyone, did any of the hives make it? Uh, the hives are quite singed, but mostly intact. Uh, the ones that were closed are still closed, and you still hear buzzing of bees in there. Uh, but the one that was open, the whole bees dead. You do find honey there. There is some honey in there, not yeah. much, but a little bit. I'm a, I'm a just I'm a just go ahead and. Get the Take honey. honey. You, you, yeah, four exactly. Honey. I, I'm gonna go grab like a jar or something and just. Oh, we should have kept the one from like... earlier that they threw back in the skeletons. <laughs> oh uh, no! Uh, you can you via containers that we just assume you'll have your adventurer. You probably have something. You get you collect about four ounces of honey. I'm I'm an old lady. I am all about the preserves. Mm -hmm. I'm right there with you. <laughs> Hey, preserves are good. Uh, so the there door, you uh, before you kind of swings open, the double door goes like this. As it opens up, revealing another dark pathway. I need to grab my bag, though. 
Yeah. I don't. I don't want to leave that behind. That's that's my only. I mean, plan he he grow. fireballed the room. Uh, your bag is quite singed, along with some of the plants that you had, but uh, they are mostly intact. They oh. You can just druid stuff. craft them better. Yeah. They were just hairy. Uh, my plans. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're better now. Uh, oh, they're don't worry. worry. Saving throw, it's okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, inanimate objects do not make dexterity saving throws. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I thought they were playing smoke. Oh, so we're in the room with a big old skeleton chest now, huh? Yes. You is sure this are. an is this another room of magical darkness, or is this just dark? This is normal darkness. However, you do sense. Oh, I didn't mean to show that just yet. You do uh -oh. sense uh -oh. ma um, some magic coming through here. However, it's a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, what you see oh, upon hmm. the altar. As there, you see like kind of a, lar a large altar kind of steam of blood, but on top of it is a large basketball creature with multiple eye stalks. Rotting flesh appears to be an undead sort, and one large eye in the middle. At these eye stalks, there's another smaller eye. It looks over you, you hear it say, uh, and It looks like this. That. It is an undead beholder. Um, what language was that? The, 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 the language of deep speech. You also notice there is a plaque underneath it. Deep I read out the plaque. Is is deep speech somewhat similar to Goblin? Not quite. It, uh, you you're old enough that you've definitely right, or at least heard it mentioned that the language of foul creatures, speak, uh, like kind of deep creatures, creatures from the undercommon. And sometimes the mind players as well are the ones who speak. For some reason, and then beholders also speak. At least if they I read well, I wrote this, the they certainly did, or something where I thought they did, so. Speak deep speech. I mean, it's really bad. Cool. Did anybody understand what he said? Not at all. Nope. Do you speak English? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand you. Come on, so you do I notice there is a convenient plaque common. written in common underneath it. That says, oh, for those who do not speak part. deep speech. Oh, okay, Press let's one. go. Press one. <laughs> no. For those who do not speak the, the language of the deep, give what you love to perceive this room or face the terror of the death. Okay, so parents will have to give him fireball. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> well. If what you okay. love. Hold on, I gotta pull up the stat block now. Oh boy. Oh no, don't give him fire. <sighs> I probably shouldn't. You would probably survive. Maybe. Um. Give what you love to continue. So basically, there... we have to huh. off the dog. It's no... no, you leave my dog out of this. Sorry, <laughs> you leave my house out of this. Oh, you'll get your fireball get right back at you. Your what? Define, cloak, define what born, kind of love. And people not really uh, taking too kind of the dragons. My cloak protects me, and it's the thing that I love the most. So do you, do you bring that forth as an offer? Yes. Uh, you notice there is a chest in the corner of the room. He points to that with his eyes on. I put it in there. All right. When you're when you're looking at the chest, you also notice there are several other items in there. Uh, let me describe them for you real quick. In there, you see a silver locket, a gold ring, a a small book, a sword that gleams of gold and written, has, has elegant writing on it, and a small container. And now my cloak. And now your cloak. Um, I'm not taking anything. He's going to attack if you take anything from there. Those uh, are offerings made by other people, and 
that's a that's a no go. I'd want to investigate those things, but I don't think that's a good idea either. I can they get a religion um, check on that? A religion check? Yes. I uh, make a religion check. I mean, I'm proficient in religion. But you're not over there. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, so it was a 10. a 10. Even with a 10, actually, you can recognize at least the book. You recognize the book as a small, uh, as a pocket edition of a, of Prayers <clears throat> to Helm. Hmm. A prayer booklet for Helm. Probably given up by some priest of Helm or something. Okay. I'm going to walk back to the group now. Are we all ready to move on? I feel like we probably all have to put something in here. Oh, no. Actually, before I walk back to the group, I'm going to go test the door, see if it'll open for me. The, the other door opens, and the Beholder does not attack you. What about if we all try to walk through it? If we all try towards the door... I am not uh, going to I, attempt you are to walk to try. towards the door. I am Only not doing that. Only one person made that. the offering. That were one person's clear to go through. I am going to. I will put myself as a test subject. I'm going to attempt to go through the door to see if it closes. All right, you are going to attempt to go through the other door. Yeah. Is really a dice? Oh no! One. All right. I need you to make a DC 14 Constitution saving throw. Oh gosh. You got hit with one of his eyes. You've been hit by, you've been struck by, food criminal. An undead yeah, beholder. Undead beholder. You, you said constitution, <laughs> right? constitution, Constitution saving throw. Uh, 14 with my modifier. All right. You feel your body seize up. And almost paralyzed for a brief moment, but you you're able to kind of regain composure and kind of gain control of your faculties, uh, but, um, but only barely. It looks over to you, M multiple eye stocks now pointing at you, saying, whoa, whoa. as if that was not a, that was not a smart thing to do. Ah, uh, he I said understand. he doesn't <laughs> like you. <laughs> Shut it, just Harry. I feel like it would be prudent for us all to drop something, so I'm going to, I suppose. I understand. Um, Sorry gonna, for messing uh, your theory. Oh, I'm going to go into the old, the old in in a pocket, uh, and pull out pull out a uh, a piece of paper, give it a kiss, and then put it in the chest. Uh, you see the same items I listed before. Which is fine. I'm just going to leave it be. Hey, you leave it. Um, and yes. I'm going uh, to head back to the thing. I placed a uh, letter in it from one of my now deceased children. Mm. That makes me I guess I go up to the chest and I put in my mother's pendant. All right, you place that in the chest. I would also like to open the book to see if I can read anything in the book while it's still in the chest. Alright, so while you're putting it in there, you quickly just kind of leaf through it, not trying to, you know, look suspicious. And you know, there's just several prayers to Helm, several prayers of the church, and, and the tenets of Helm, too. Uh, can I have a quick scan through the pages to see if any of them have been torn out? None of them have been torn out. It appears to be very, uh, very well kept, well fingered through. You can see the mark where the person has written has read it, uh, but uh, it is quite, quite in good condition, as if the person really took took care of it. I move on. You move on. I'm going to take one of my two plants and give it a little kiss and kind of touch its leaves one more time and set that inside the uh, the chest. All right, you set your plant, one of your plants, upon the chest. With the rest of the items I've listed before. Towards the door and stand with those that have already passed. 
All right, you do that. So it's just Harry left, right? Yep, just Harry. Oh no. Let's uh, let's let's talk about this. Oh, oh come on. Hmm. He's on his own. Hmm. Yeah, no. What one? Yes, indeed. Me too. I don't know what to put in there. Uh, fireball? <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> I put a fireball in there. You are, you are certainly welcome to try. That's probably a bad idea. Yeah. One could argue that. But you are you are welcome to do whatever you like. Hmm. Well, I've got a letter. I'm gonna put my letter in there. Ah, you choose to place your letter in the chest. You place it. And then... I go for the door. You go for the door, you are unhindered. Oh, yay. All right, and you proceed through the door into another long hallway. You keep, uh, you look down further. They appear to be lined with eight stone statues facing different directions, holding swords made of stone. And that is where we'll end tonight's session. Tune in next week for the exciting Whoa. continuation of the adventures of the Fantastic Few. Oh. You can also give a team name. Nah, in the adventures nah, of the Tower lame. of the Mad Lich, floor number one. What waits in that Tower of Statues? What does that dragon symbol mean? Are they missing out on epic backstory, lore, and goods by not going the other direction? Tune in next week and find out at the same time. Uh, the same bad humor. Yeah, guy, guy, guy. You can't. You can't leave it like that. Oh, have they missed out on backstory stuff? That's just me. You're not done yet. You're not, and to be fair, if we would want the mirror out. You can always go back. If we want the mirror out, we wouldn't be dealing with Beholder or giving me anything we love. Like that, you can always go back, and you, there may be things you missed. There may not. I will. I will. I will not say more. I'm just gonna keep you keep you hang, hang, hung on with cliffhangers. But we will be continuing this next Saturday at the same time, about five o'clock Eastern Standard. Yeah, so if you would love to be like to be here for that, hit that follow button. It'll be good to have you here. It's really, I'm really excited. Hopefully, you all enjoy playing this, and hopefully, you all enjoy watching this. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Like and now you'll get to see my cat. Woo! And now you get to end with this beautiful image of a cat. Me? Is that yeah. Pakistan? Yep. Oh, I just saw your message. I did go a little bit later than I tend. I want. I, I I want the session to be about two and a half hours around there. Not too much later because I know it's getting late for y'all. So I don't want it to go too late. So this is where. So this is where we're gonna end, and we're gonna usually go from about five to seven thirty or seven, if, if that's if that's easier for y'all. Again, easier. Yeah. So that's it. So next cool. week we'll pick it up and we'll continue delving into the tower of the mad witch. See what's alive. Yay! Oh, well, yeah, it's not going to be all silliness and stuff like that. The beginning is a little bit more kind of silly and fun, but it does get into serious. And I think there's a decent balance. I don't know. Will no. Ralph make a return? Maybe. I need Ralph to return. Yeah, I need like Ralph my life. <laughs> I don't know, you know the other players I ran through thing. in this dungeon, they recruited one of the people, the, a, a different person who you'll meet later as an NPC, and they recruited him into the party. All I can right, imagine well... you'll come through a door later and Ralph will be like, you again? Ah! Uh, so if I, if I still have enough magic at the end of all of this, what's happening is we're going in there, we're dispel magicking, we're stealing all of his fireball sweets because those were great. Right, we're gonna steal his bones, <laughs> and then we're gonna find someone to reanimate him later. <laughs> no, we are recruiting. <laughs> no, no, I'm just gonna we'll speak to, to my patron and be like, when that this guy was really cool. Now, the Mad Legend Part Two. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. We're gonna go ahead and wrap I would up like to. Here. I would like to propose the team name first. Yes. All right. Before we go, let's do it. Here, the team name. The Lich Lynches. We're gonna <laughs> hang him. We're gonna publicly that, execute that, him. That just sparks 
arguments of racism, so maybe not. Yeah, let's just do that one. Maybe mm -hmm. we won't be lynching the lich. That's. <laughs> all right then. <laughs> well, I'll let you. Do you all have a week to decide on that. Uh, we can come back next week and we'll find out what the na the team name. The unlikables. <laughs> you mean the unlikables? Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> well, thank you all for playing. I've been Just likeables. Bethany, this has been Bethany, Captain Raygun, Captain Raygun's girlfriend, Art of Arts, and Drop of the Fill. Shark Avenger. Shark Avenger. Nice. And Mooncake. And Mooncake. Yeah. Good scene. <laughs> but we are going to go ahead and drop a raid. We're going to bring some love over to that family games. And yeah, we're going to have a good time over there. So come and hang out with me there, and I'll see you all the next time. Take care. Bye bye. 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 I probably should have started bye. the raid before I pushed over here and said, hey, we're leaving. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but there's still a bunch of people in chat that you're all good. Professional Help. streamers. Just like extraordinary normally see y'all next bye bye and cut well i'm not cutting Thank i am not putting the youtube though <sighs> i'm super super tired so now i'm going to bed hey it's a raid hey it's a raid for the next guy hopefully y'all enjoyed that almost one oh, i love that. Oh, it was fun. Thanks, man.